stakes live action poker live at the bike watch it live on the web or play it if you dare at the bicycle casino right here in los angeles hello and welcome to live at the bike another exciting night at live at the bike i'm david tuckman joins by the lovely Nicole Peppy. That's right. I'm feeling a little peppy myself tonight. <laughs> and uh, we're really excited tonight because we've got a 300 500 game. <laughs> Blinds are 5 yeah. and 5. Watch what you're and uh, we've got likes of Barry Woods here. It's kind of like a home game. And we've got our own Bart Hansen in the game. Really exciting. Very exciting. Live at the bike. First and only cash game out there. So uh, why don't we get right to the game? Introduce the players right away. All right, in seat one, we have Joseph. I would raise with it. I say he's going to bluff with Joseph's known as Chester on 2 plus 2. Ooh, and he does 2 plus 2ers out there. In seat 2, we have Kyle. In seat 3, we have Gus. We've seen Gus a few times. Yeah, Gus is a pretty tight player, pretty ABC. Yep. Seat 4, we have Morgan. Morgan Kelly. Now, this is actually Barry Woods' uh, daughter's boyfriend. What? Yeah. Oh, very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, in C5, we have Bart. Woohoo! <laughs> C6, we have Barry Woods himself. Wow, and he, he doubled up, by the way. He made a straight flush okay. right before the show started against somebody else's top full house. Whoops. And uh, <laughs> doubled up. C7, <laughs> we have David. David sporting the facial hair there. Look yes. at that. Very nice, David. It's a look. Seat, seat eight, we have Michael, who is known as what? On the He's SP surfing on 2 plus 2. Okay, we saw Michael last week when I was here. Yeah. And in seat nine, we have Jeff. Jeff is new. New player there, about $500. Once again, this is a restricted buy-in game. All these players bought in for $500. The blinds are five and five. And it's going to play a little bit like a home game tonight. These guys are all really familiar with each other and, and friendly. But they're playing for real cash here. <laughs> if you want to follow us on a live thread, you can go to 2plus2.com, go to forums, and uh, go to World Poker Tour and other events, and go to Live at the Bike for January 24th, and uh, follow thread there. Or you can always email us at liveatthebike.com. If you have trouble finding this, you can go to liveatthebike.com and click on the link. Right, right. And... Well, we'll get our first hand here. We got seat nine made it $25 with 10 five of spades. Okay. And he got two callers. And the pot is now $75, and none of these guys really have anything special. <laughs> seat, and there they are. Kyle 25. calls with queen nine of clubs, and Gus called with trays. Jeff's going to make that continuation bet, though, take it down. Take it down. So when Bart told me that he was going to play in the game, he said, hey, do you think we can get Nicole tonight? And I was like, <laughs> oh, I hope so. Of as, course. As much as I love working with Bart, it's really great to get a fresh face in here. <laughs> Especially a pretty fresh face. Oh, thank you. It's got to be nice to have a change, too. Exactly. For Bart as well, I'm sure, just to be able to get out there. Doing this every day, and not being able to play as much probably can be a little tiring, maybe, perhaps, yeah. I don't know. Well, let's see if he can put his money where his mouth is. <laughs> exactly. I mean, he's been telling people how to play for the last year. Let's see yep. if he can uh, perform under pressure. That's going to be the hard thing for him today. I don't know if he's going to play that many hands. He's got a lot to live up to, right? Yeah, we'll see. Limped around now. Are they going to chop it up? No, they check it here. Oh, yeah, I don't chop it. Small blind versus the big blind. Ten... Seven for Gus and ten four over and out for uh, Morgan Kelly there. And Morgan's going to bet with nothing and take it down. Nice Flop job, is Morgan. queen, deuce three. He uses this position and takes it down. How old is Morgan? I don't know. Because he, he looks I mean, he to be looks, the youngest at the table, yeah? He looks like a baby. He does. <laughs> well, I know Barry. Uh, Barry's daughter is, I, I want to say, in her early 20s, so I, I assume that he also is probably barely legal. <laughs> you like the young boys? I think Morgan is very attractive, yes. <laughs> wow. We've got a big board for this game. Everybody wants to get in the game here. Three to five is my favorite table here at the bike, is it? so I, I wouldn't mind playing this right now. It's a pretty good table, too. Good mix of people. Yeah, you're wondering if, if it, the game turns out to be too passive. We'll see what happens. Barry usually mixes it up, though, huh? Yeah. 
We haven't seen that yet. Three players limped around. Pot's fifteen dollars. Pot flop is king seven ten rainbow, and uh, seat eight. That's Michael. SP Surfing's got top pair, and he's gonna throw out a little bet. Looks like fifteen dollars. Gonna bet the pot, and look at that. And and Morgan's gonna call with second pair. And Mike is going to continue betting. And this is time for Morgan to get out of this one, huh? Yes. Took one off, see what happens. Queen of Spades certainly didn't help his hand. Perhaps he was hoping for a nine on the turn, I don't know. Yeah, nine or eight. <laughs> Give him some sort of a draw. <laughs> I mean, maybe he can represent a straight, you can represent a straight if a six or a jack comes out. I'm not sure if Morgan was thinking along those lines or not. <laughs> So I gotta tell you, I had such an amazing day today. You did? Why? Oh, ridiculously amazing. I got my I got my surround sound, my surround stereo sound hooked up into my house. Okay. I got my plasma TV on the wall. Okay. So excited. Wow. I mean, it's it's so loud. It's so cool. And uh, and I played golf today. Oh my god. Six pars in the first eight holes. Jeez. You're a high roller now. In fuego. <laughs> C2 is raising up to 30. C2, we have Kyle. Yeah, Kyle's got ace queen off suit. We also see uh, not very much else for cards out there, actually. Yeah, well, Gus is going to call with a couple of ducks. He's got pocket deuces. And we do see that a deuce is out. 25 more. Quit tossing salad. David Kelsey looks like Starsky and Hutch coming. I mean, what is this? This mustache look. Four players. Uh, does anybody want to drink? Or <laughs> who's full? A little facial hair on some men's not so bad. Good. You like that, huh? Kind of that rough tumble fire, like <laughs> kind of <laughs> firefighter. Good look. job. Um, <laughs> How does that work for you? Flop is he ace, good. He ten, well. five. Kyle, the pre-flop razor hits top pair, and he's going to bet. And most likely take this down. Yeah, nobody really has much of anything. And he bets $100 into a $100 pot. Nice pot size bet. I like to do that as well. Find out where I am right away. Yeah, no dilly-dallying there. Right. Someone has king, maybe they'll re you. Now, can you get away from it, though, in a game where you only have, say, $400 left? If you put 100 in, mm -hmm. and a guy re-raises you to 300 And I have 400 left? And you got ace-queen. I mean, what do you do there? You really put in the spot. I think, you know, if someone re-raises, it's giving away my game. But if they're re-raising me that much, I'm, I'm going to let my one pair go yeah. at that point. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it depends it's on the player. It's not worth it to me. Yeah. Especially when a game's just started. I don't know, that shouldn't come into play, but it does. For me, I'm just, I'm not willing to fight that kind of battle right away. Right. Not you like I spots. know I have the nuts, what's the point, yeah. Right. <laughs> Makes sense sometimes, you know, I mean, you want to pick your spots, and obviously if you don't know the player you're playing against, you assume if he's raising you, one pair is not good. Right. Limped around three ways. Flop is all hearts there. Nine, seven, six. Now, seat seven, David has got a uh, gut shot straight flush throw with a five of hearts. And uh, Gus has got a straight draw, but no heart. And this is getting checked around. And the turn is a five, and Gus makes the straight. And this is when Barry's going to give it a go. Yeah, Barry's going to give it a shot, and I'm, I'm sure that Gus David will fold, but I'm sure Gus will throw in the $10. What is it going to take to fold, Dan? Leave the 20 out there. Barry makes a $20 bet, and I think Gus is going to raise. Gus <laughs> 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 Barry tried to take some money back, and uh, Gus said, no, no, leave it out there. <laughs> and, then I, re and then raised him. And Gus showed him the queen and said, is this good? And Barry said, actually, it was. <laughs> and actually, he was not lying. Yeah, the queen high was good. <laughs> Once again, we try to keep the show as interactive as possible, so if you can follow along on a 2 plus 2 thread, a lot of the people that are actually normal posters are actually in the game tonight. And uh, you can also email us with any of your criticisms. Uh, criticisms. Complaints. I advice. prefer only <laughs> good comments. Okay, well, you guys can criticize <laughs> me and, and ogle over Nicole. If we're doing something bad, don't tell us. We don't want to know. <laughs> Button is in seat six. That's Barry Woods. Fifteen. Hey, should I be worried? Barry called my wife. On the phone, my wife called him back, and my wife is going over his house on Tuesday. Yeah. And you have your wife has not told you why? No, she told me. 
But I mean, should that would, would those things worry you? Well, depending on the reason. Mm, no, maybe I don't know. What's the reason? You're not telling. She's me? a masseuse. Ah, uh, ooh, then maybe you should be worried. I know. <laughs> I don't know. Checks around here. Flop was queen jack ten. Turn is a five, and they both hit the five here on the turn. But Barry's kicker is better here. Barry's actually got a open ended straight draw with a pair of fives. Um, I'm surprised Barry didn't bet the flop. And Barry bets 30 on the turn and takes it down. Joseph's a pretty straightforward player, known as Chester on 2 plus 2. Rarely gets out of line. Pretty much when he's betting, he's got it. Are you familiar with a lot of the players at the table? I'm not, actually. You know, I've been, I feel like since I've started working, I've gotten out of the no limit game a lot. And so I, I, I'm familiar with the faces of a lot of these players, but I haven't actually played with a lot of these players. <laughs> I mean, like, I know Barry, but I've never sat down at a table with him. Well, that's one of the things of being a prop here. Mm -hmm. Second year of prop, I mean, they, they actually recruit a lot of no limit players to be props. And the second year of prop, basically your no limit play is cut in like... It's done. Done yes. by 80%. Yes. So, yeah, No Limit's my favorite game, but I haven't even barely touched it. Uh, I had to fight to get into a game. You see me always fighting to get into a game. <laughs> Avoiding Limit, holding as much as I can, and trying to get a No Limit. Right, but then the problem is, then they take you out when you're... Right. <laughs> Six-way Six action, limped around, pots $30 to the flop. Flop is Jack, Six, Deuce, Rainbow. And, uh... <laughs> nobody's got a Jack here. A couple of players have Sixes. And sure, that's one of them. Seat four, Morgan Kelly's got a king six, and he's going to bet $30 into a $30 pot. And Bart quickly throws away six, seven of diamonds. And Morgan's going to take it down. I mean, Bart's in there with a nice suited connector, and, uh, you know, that's not really the flop he's looking for. He's not really looking for a second pair. I gotta say, I'm a big fan of Barry as a person. I really think he's a great guy. Uh -huh. I wonder what it's like to be so-called in the family. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's too close. I wonder. Button is in seat eight. Small blind is Jeff in seat nine, five dollars. Joseph's got the big blind, five dollars. <laughs> and uh, Kyle's going to limp in, and the action is now on Gus. <laughs> Gus is going to raise up to $30 with six eight of hearts. Wow, Gus is playing a little Gus out of the is, box. You know what? It's funny because when we introduced him, you said he's a very tight player, and he is, but he's uh, making up his play tonight, which is, which is good. good. Well, he did this last time he played in the game like this, and a lot of these players are really, you know, he's really, I think, at a, at a safe ground with these players. Mm -hmm. And I think he can, you know, play out of the box with these guys. Which is good. And Kyle's going to call him with King 9. And, well, he flops second pair, and the problem is there's an ace out there. But Kyle's that doesn't not bother Kyle. Well, you know what? <laughs> don't bother he doesn't. Me. He wants to see where he's at right away. He doesn't want to check and then have to face a big bet. He wants to see if maybe Gus is uncomfortable with the flop as all. Well. You know, oftentimes, you know, hey. And he found out quick, right. didn't he? I mean, if Gus raised the pocket nines, pocket eights, pocket jacks even, this is a terrible flop. Right. Make it a double. No, it's single. Supposedly Barry's buying everybody a drink. Where's my drink? It's all the same as... You know all Barry gave me tonight? He gives everybody else a drink. I got a stinking Tootsie Roll. <laughs> all I got for Christmas. Look at that. Freaking Tootsie Roll. Later at the halftime, we're going to do seven in the stretch and do some yoga. Now Barry's talking about doing yoga. He's a renaissance man. <laughs> Can you guess how old he is? No. How old is he? Just guess. No, I don't want to. I hate I mean, that. He looks That's the most awful question to ask anybody. Guess how old I am. He's a guy. He's not a girl. Who cares? I don't know. I don't, I don't Guys like don't him. really care. Okay, 29. Oh. <laughs> Come on. No, I don't want to. We, you, Bart and I have spent the last year trying to sell Live at the Bike as politically incorrect, keeping it real, and then you come out with some bullshit that like he's 29? That is real for me. If he asked me, it's the same thing I tell him. And I would never ask somebody, how old do you think I am, or how much do you think I weigh? That's you just set yourself up for, like, huge That's because you're a girl. <laughs> Limped around here, $15 pot, the flop is... Nine nine six rainbow and Gus has flopped trips and he checks it. Turn is a jack and still nobody has anything. And Gus is gonna throw ten dollars in there. 
and that's probably going to take it down. And it does. Gus had the old nine deuce. Nice job, Gus. Big blind. Actually, it was not a big blind special. It couldn't have been worse than that. Was it? <laughs> I think he was under the gun special. He was. He limped in under the gun with nine deuce offsuit. Well, he's mixing up his play. Watch out. It's me under watch tonight. Wow, okay. I just assumed he was the big blind there. Button is in seat one. First to act will be Morgan. Yeah, it was crazy. That would have been For the ace queen, is that Gus actually in seat three? 20. Yeah. Kind of wonder, is Morgan going to be a uh, future son in law? <laughs> hmm. I don't want to put pressure on anybody, yeah, but hey. Really. Raise up here by David Kelsey in seat seven. He's got uh, king three of hearts. And Gus Michael's going to call with jack ten. And Gus just calls with ace queen. I mean, yeah. interesting. Well, he's out of position <laughs> with ace queen. Can be a tough hand to play out of position in the big blind. You know, if you get if you raise him and then you get called, where are you there? Right. And David outflops him though. He's got a pair of threes. Backdoor heart draw. And I think Gus is thinking. I mean, obviously he has no piece of this, but he thinks maybe David missed it. Maybe you put David on Ace Jack or Ace Queen also, and this is not a kind of flop that would hit him. And David called very fast. And wow, and there Gus hits the ace. Here we got a big hand. Uh -oh. Gus beats him in. Wow, and you know, David made a great call on the flop. He really read him as a bluff, and Gus just got lucky ace. on the turn. He did. And Gus is going to take down what amounts to about, wow, that was a pretty big bet on the turn. What amounts to about a, uh, I want to say $700 pot right there. Well, we'll see right now, whatever Gus has got in front of him. I was questioning his non-re-raise pre-flop, but it turned out beautifully for him. He knew it was not going to happen that way. Well, he tried to make a move on, on David, and David smelled it out. David called him, and then Gus got lucky. It's kind of a bluff gone right, huh? Yeah. Whenever you bluff, have out. You can always buy up to five at any time. And Bart obviously has gotten up from the table. He's not. Oh, no, he's there. Just didn't notice. <laughs> he's so quiet. He's going to play a hand no matter what. Ooh, and Morgan Kelly has pocket aces. There we go. The first aces of the night. And he's in the big blind. Let's see how he plays it when it gets around to him. How do, what do you like to do when you have aces in the blind? Depends on how many players have, what the texture, how many players have obviously entered the pot, mm -hmm. was the pot raised, and who's entered the pot. Okay. So is there ever a situation where you just check? If no one's raised and you're in the big blind and you have aces, you just check? If nobody's raised, only if everybody's folded until the small blinds. That would be the only time. And even then, I'd probably raise. <laughs> no, I don't think I would just let a limped around pot and just check it. No, I don't. I want to charge people. I want to get more money in the pot when I have a premium hand. Exactly. And actually, Morgan did just call a $15 raise here with his aces. Wow. And that's a lot of people in the pot. Give him an ace. Let's make some fireworks. Yeah, flop is 10, 6, 4, and Joseph flops two pair, top two pair. You wonder what Joseph is doing in there with 10, 6 off suit, but that's sure enough the hand he's in there with, and he's got top two pair. I think he is actually the one who raised free flop with 10, 6. Did he? Okay. Late <laughs> raising in late position, you know, representing, trying to mix it up a little bit, but hey, if you're going to raise in there with 10, 6. He and, knew it was coming. And he flopped a monster, and Gus bets. I mean, there's only one over card. It's a pretty good flop for fives, and Morgan is trying to figure out what to do with this hand. And Morgan just calls with his aces. Look at this. And look David at is going to be in there with a top pair. Wow. And Jeff is obviously going to pass. And what is Joseph going to do here with top two pair? He's got about $500 in front of him. And uh, the bet is $75 to him. I have a guess of what he's going to do. Gus bet 75 Joseph, I'm sorry, uh, Morgan called. And David just smooth called. The pot is now about $300. 75 to call, and <laughs> Joseph is raising it up here. I think he made it $300 to go. Call in. Whoa. Don't you remember whose money this is, dude? <laughs> now, Morgan got caught here. Yeah, and Morgan's going to go all in. And uh, I'm sure, obviously, David will probably fold top pair with a nine kicker. 
And I can't imagine. You can't think that's good now. And he's going to lay this down, I'm pretty sure. Now, Joseph had made it 250 to go. Morgan comes to the top for 400, and obviously for 150 more, Joseph's not going to go anywhere. Of course. Morgan is, I'm sure, thinking he's good here, unfortunately. Wow, and he's actually thinking about it. Maybe he puts, maybe he puts uh, Morgan on a set of fours. Which one was two? But for 150 more, he has to call, and he says it. And this pot now is 550 uh, 900 about $1,100 pot. The turn is a deuce, the river is a queen, and 10-6 holds up. Joseph's two pair holds up there. Morgan's not going to like this. No. And Morgan had a lot of outs there. I mean, he needed a 10. He did, yeah. And then obviously on the turn, he can get a 10, a deuce, or an ace. <laughs> wow. His two pair would obviously be higher. It would have turned out well for Morgan had there not been <laughs> that 10 6 in there. And yeah. he was hoping that. He was hoping to cash in on a great pot, but that kind of shows the advantages of why you do want to raise when you have a big pair to get that 10 6 off. If, if he had raised a. Um, any kind of amount, really, probably. Yeah. I mean, I'll Joseph give you the, been out. Yeah, I'll give you an example. The only time I won't raise with aces is let's say a guy in middle to late position makes it like 75 or 100 to go, and I'm pretty sure nobody else is going to enter the pot. I will sometimes smooth call. Mm -hmm. so, because I know it's already going to be heads up. I don't need to raise again to reveal the strength of my hand. But in a hand like that where it's five-handed, do I really want, for $15, do I really want to take aces five-handed? Mm -hmm. And you're asking to get cracked. It was a good idea, it just didn't yeah. pan out. Especially when, you know, if you don't have the experience enough to get away from aces, it's really difficult to get away from aces, especially if you are, I, I, well, it's difficult for anybody. Yeah. Especially, oh, yeah. though. I have big trouble getting away from aces. Aces are hard to get away from, you know? <laughs> but if you decide to play it slow, yeah. you know, you've got to be able to get away from them, especially in a big, deep, no low game. And look at just like that Joseph is up to probably about $1,100. Uh, ah, the beauty of no limits. Isn't it great? <laughs> you might argue it's better than sex. I mean, it's certainly better than pizza. You might not. <laughs> hey, is anybody at 2 plus 2? What's going on? <laughs> Once again, if you want to follow a live thread, you can go to liveatthebike.com and click on the 2 plus 2 thread. That'll take you to the live at the bike thread over at 2plus2.com. And you can follow along with us. You can also email us at liveatthebike.com. Seat nine raises 25 with ace king. I give you respect. Wow. Now, if it was Barry, I don't want to suck out. I'm going all over. How much did he make it under the I'm um, um, in the blind that day. Ten bucks. He raised it to ten. Ten. He raised fifteen. I raised fifteen. Fifteen, 15. 15 with box cross. Bart's trying to commentate on the show. <laughs> <laughs> trying to just get all the information right here. <laughs> Thank you, Bart. <laughs> Let's just listen to him. And Barry's going to call this, going to heads up here, and he hits top oh. pair. Out flops Jeff. Oh, Barry's not even going to He's not even gonna do the check raise. He's going to bet right into the ace king. <laughs> <laughs> Not a very good flop for a black ace king, huh? Yeah, I, you know, uh, with ace king, I like to raise pre-flop and then I like to let it go. If nothing comes, which is right. I mean, if some, of the time. I mean, if somebody checks to you, obviously you're gonna bet sure. heads up. I mean, there's a good chance your ace king is good because the flop might have missed him, but exactly. he bets 50 into you, hey. <laughs> That's enough of my ace king. We've got an email here from Mark Bonagura. And he talked about the players here. He said, his question is, I'm sure there are other games of the same blinds going on at the casino. 
do most players at the casino want to play in a televised game? Yeah, at my expense, and you know what? It's really uh, you know to each their own. Mm -hmm. Some players don't like to show their cards. Oh, yeah, the Those are very few and far between. <laughs> Most of them <laughs> like the, the uh, <laughs> like the atmosphere that we <laughs> provide on Live the Bike, and they also like the um, the chance to go back and watch themselves, exactly. see how they played, and to see how others played against them. Exactly. Yeah. Or their a lot of times families are watching, which is a fun aspect. And for tonight's game, we actually have ten players on the board waiting to get into this game. But I, I, I've actually played on the show a couple of times, uh -huh. and then on top of that, I've also, you know, watched obviously thousands of hours of it between archives and doing the commentary, and it's a great learning uh, tool for yourself. I mean, there are a couple of times I've watched myself and I'm going, "What the heck am I doing? What a stupid play!" You know. I was thinking that actually when I was not about you, about <laughs> about uh, learning a lot uh, when I play, when I was here on Thursday with Bart. Just watching a 200 game, it was, I mean, I learned so much just being on this end of it, to be able to see everyone's cards and yeah. see how people play. Um, just gave me a lot of insight. I mean, a lot of people ask me, they go, wow, you must know all the players at the casino. I go, that's not really the advantage I'm talking about because yes. anybody can watch the archives. But for us and for anybody that watches the show on a regular basis, see what plays work in No Limit Hold'em and what plays don't work. And it's consistent. I mean, we've seen it time and time again. Which plays just do not work? Yeah, exactly. I mean, when I saw when I see three, Gus is raising it up to twenty-five. When I saw some, um, he's got pocket sevens. Nice little hand. When you see good plays on here, I don't necessarily remember who the player was, or I don't necessarily care. It's just interesting to see how players play the game, yeah. and it uh, gives you uh, good tips for your own play in the future. Barry Smooth calls the monster here. He's got eight six off suit. <laughs> Now this is one of those flops. Now Morgan is not in the hand. It's heads up here between between Barry and Gus. Now Barry can somehow use his position here. He should be able to take this pot away. Well, it goes check check. Uh oh. Well, well, Barry now has the best hand, but it's hard for him to know that. And Gus throws a little fifteen dollar bet in there. And Barry called, and now Gus is going to check, and Barry's going to bet it. Barry knows he's good. He has a check on the flop. He's got a figure. But what's the point? I mean, I always, I, I love value betting, but what is the value of betting your eight here? What can you get called by that you can beat? <laughs> you know, I can't explain, Barry, but I think it's beautiful. I think he knows what he's doing, and it's, he's going to get Gus to call, I think. Okay, hey. <laughs> I mean, if Gus, I mean, I'm a, I'm a, me and Bart battle about oh, this. We true. battle this every day, because Bart's yeah. always like, no, no, you shouldn't be value betting the river. I personally think there's a lot of value in not showing your hand down. Yeah. Um, and maybe, perhaps, that also will come Barry's mind. But, I mean, in terms of that, it's just an odd play in a sense. What are you going to get called by? No, I agree. I do, I'm not a big value better myself, yeah. and I think... Uh, for me, when a pot is big enough. Oh, <laughs> Bart is commentating again. <laughs> For me, by the time you get to the last bet of a pot, you know, you've already got probably a pretty good sized pot. What is the point of a value bet? But, I mean, I understand the point, but to me, I'd rather not lose my whole stack at this point. I'd rather just right. take a pot. If you get raised in the river, yeah. if you've got somewhat of a marginal hand and you get raised in the river because you're value betting, yeah. you put yourself in a really tough spot. Is it worth spot. it? Yeah, and then you have to throw it away when maybe you would have won. Yeah, well, they sense your weakness. Yeah, you there's theories everywhere yeah. about it. Pocket kings for David Kelsey in seat seven, but seat one is going to raise it up. Uh, Joseph mixing it up a little bit with four or five spades. It worked for him last time. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a little bit out of the box here. He's mixing up his play. And Kelsey is on the button with pocket kings. And he's checking his hand right now. Let's watch his face. I think he gives it away. He wanted to play it. Ready? You're serious, right? You're some people say mustaches give away your tail. <laughs> Do you think he's dead? Might have. I'm not sure. I'll have to keep watching. Oh, that's way. That's way too close. <laughs> way, way too close. David's gonna appreciate that when he sees this later. Hey, I hope he appreciates that. <laughs> Now the one thing I always bet, I always argue with Bart about this is one of the reasons I like to value bet the river is I've noticed a, a tendency with a lot of no limit holdem players mm -hmm. where they'll only bet the river if they either have a monster or they're bluffing. Okay. So oftentimes, if I can eliminate the fact that they might have a monster, well then I can say, oh, well they probably are bluffing, and I can call them down more often. Okay. Now if a player like Barry though, who will value bet more often, well then suddenly I can go, well he could be bluffing. 
he could have a monster, or he could just be betting his king. Right. And you don't know. Which I think is what is great about being a play. Yeah. It's one of the reasons I like value betting. I mean, I, I talk to Bart all the time. Now, if I'm playing with Bart and Bart makes a nice bet at the river, I'm going to say he's either bluffing or he's got a monster. Right. But, but how do you decide? That's the question, huh? Well, then you got to replay the hand in your head and figure out, does it make sense? Did that river card make him? Was he slow playing something? Would he slow play something? Looks like Bart is going to play, ladies and gentlemen. Drum roll. There it is. Bart's hand, folks. He's got a lot of pressure here, I'm sure. How deliberate is this? Now, uh, Morgan Kelly has raised it and made it $20 to go. And Bart's going to re-raise with ace-queen. So we've got ace-queen against ace-queen. Yeah, and he makes, it, he makes it 70 more. Ace-ten against ace And Joseph folds his ace-queen. Who was in the game? I went two twists. And uh, Kyle's going to fold. Gus is going to fold. And let's see what Morgan does here. Morgan's got badly dominated with ace-10. We saw one of Bart's queens are dead. Three aces are gone. Ace-10 here. It's a tough hand to play out of position, isn't it? But he's going to call. And the pot is now about $150 to the flop. And there's the 10. What a flop from Morgan. 10 and two diamonds. He is wow. a monster here. That is a monster. How about a little check raise? <laughs> but I think he's going to bet it. I think he is. <laughs> now, Bart's got over cards with a uh, over cards with a gut shot, but he's in bad, bad shape here. I mean, he needs a queen that's think? not a diamond or call? a king that's not a diamond. I don't think he's going to call. He's going to raise or fold. I can't see a call here. Oh, the what do I know? <laughs> what do I know as he calls? Well, I can tell you what he should have done. He should have just folded. No. There's a jack. And Morgan's just got to know his hands even better now. And he's going to keep pushing. <laughs> now, Bart's got to play the player here. Morgan is, I, I'm, I'm betting here, Morgan's somewhat of a beginner poker player. I don't think he would, I just don't think he bets that way. You know what I mean? I don't think a, a, a beginner bets two, two times into you with nothing. Does he? No, and I, don't, I think Bart is saying that too. He's like, Bart thinking, oh, there's nothing I can do here. He can't get away from it. What can Bart $50 beat? Left. Well, think, what can Bart <laughs> beat, though? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I mean, Bart can't even be. I'm trying Ace to think of a hand. Nine. He, exactly, there's a hand. <laughs> I was trying to think. And Bart can beat King Queen, right? Mm -hmm. But even that's not great because you've got an open ended straight draw. Right. And the river would have been a four. Four of clubs, and Morgan would have been good with two pair there, jacks and tens. <laughs> Take it down, Morgan. We should. <laughs> and uh, Bart just got punked. Yes, there you go. He did. Well, you know, Bart went in there with the. He had, he had him dominated, but. He made, he made the right place. Gus is going to live straddle here. For those people at home that don't know what a live straddle is, why don't you explain it to them? A live straddle is twice the big blind, so in this case it'll be ten dollars, and we're going to five. And what you're doing is you're basically buying yourself last action. So everyone's going to have to call ten now at least to get into the pot, or they can raise. And Gus is going to have the last action, which means he can raise it again. No, he would like. it's interesting. He's actually got a pretty good hand in the big blind in, in the straddle spot. He's got king queen of spades in the straddle spot. So. You would guess that this would be a good time for him to actually raise. It might be, but uh, Jeff has actually raised on the button, though, and he's made it, I think, $55 to go. Oh, everything out of your mouth, dude. That's you know, butt sex, dude. Jeff made it $65 with ace three of diamonds on the button. Um, remember, it is a straddle pot, and I imagine Gus is probably going to call this. He's saying he hasn't looked yet, so now he's going to check out his cards. I think he's going to be pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. I would be. That's a good straddle hand. And Bart has got sixes, and he only limped in. What's he going to do now? Is he going to take one off? He's going to call now that Gus has called. Bart's got the best hand here, but it's hard for him to know that. I just feel for Bart. because You know he has so much stress. He knows everyone's watching him. It can be difficult, obviously. There's <laughs> pressure, obviously, because people are expecting pressure. him to play well. Yeah. Now, Bart's trying to figure and out, obviously, because he, yeah, he's trying to figure out right now if he has enough chips to make this call worthwhile. Right. 
If he hits his set, is he going to have enough chips to make it worthwhile? Now, he's got about $345. Now, with two callers. Make him call and give him a six. He's got the best hands. Do it. How about if he moves all in here? <laughs> that would be a beautiful play. Wouldn't it? <laughs> but it's not going to happen. No. Not going to happen. I mean, if you put Jeff on a button a steal. On the flop. That's, that's coming down from C-A-R-N-A-R. How about a king? How about I was wrong? There's a seven, though. Have you got any points for close? <laughs> no. No. Is there? Yeah. Well, uh, Gus was a little bit behind, but he outflopped him. And he's going to do a little, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going to do a check raise here. A little here. bit of a check raise, yes. Yeah. Well, heads up, you know, Jeff has got to bet this. A pot is $150. Uh-huh. And he bets 110 into it. And Gus moves all in. Nice job. And Jeff is quickly gone. And I always think this is a tell. I'll throw this at you. Notice how Gus just said, I'm all in, pretty calmly. And he said, I'm all in, without, without putting his chin in. Yeah. And I always think that if you have the hand and you're not expecting, you're expecting to take them back, a lot of people don't put the cards out, there, the chips out there. But if they don't have a real hand and they're bluffing, oftentimes they will put the chips out there to try to intimidate their opponent. I think you're correct. And we saw there, Gus did not put his chips out. I mean, there's no difference in it going to Prudential. Yeah, we did. We changed that because we no partners can go see. What do you mean? If you're, if Who you're said that? Declared partners. It's, it's in the bylaws. Of what? And there's the post. For some reason, I could not get the thread going. Good to see everybody here. <laughs> so when are they, when's it going to start, like, cracking down? Soon? <laughs> it's, it's all a whistleblower. So you know what? Blow a whistle on you, I knew somebody would respond to my uh, poker better than sex question. <laughs> somebody should, definitely. Bart makes it $25 to go with pocket eights. John E. on 2 Plus 2 has posted a picture of my wife at our wedding. How did he get that? Uh, well, my, my mother in law is Juliet Mills, so a lot of stuff's online from her. Is it bad that I don't know who Ooh, and look at this. Bart is, he's get, he's just running into it today. He raises to $25, oh, and Kyle Bart. makes it 75 with queens. Bart, Bart, Bart. I told you I felt for him. And Gus started. has got king 10 off suit. I mean, it's a pretty easy lay down for Gus. I'm not sure what he's even thinking about here. And he's going to lay it down. And what is Bart going to do here with eights? He is, the button is in seat one, so he has position on this guy, but Bart's going to lay it down. Show us a flop. I want to see if we would have got an eight. I'm the worst prop here. I'm always, I'm always, I'm always asking to I, show when we're yeah. not supposed to. <laughs> Look at this. Once again, we are live at the bike, folks. I'm David Tuckman here with Nicole Peppy. We're playing No Limit Hold'em. Blinds are five and five, and it's uh, kind of a Barry Woods home game night, huh? We've got Bart Hansen in the game. We've got Barry Woods. We've got Barry Woods' future son-in-law, question mark? <laughs> there he is. Poor kid. You're giving him a lot of pressure. Well, from what you said, you know, if his girlfriend's not ready to tie the knot with him, you said, you said he was pretty cute. Oh, stop. Their family is probably watching this. Poor That's guy. okay. We have a really close relationship. <laughs> Raise here from the button. Kyle's going to raise it up with uh, pretty much a steel raise here. He's got queen five off suit. And uh, Gus is going to lay this down. And, and Morgan's going to lay down. He had deuce three. Yeah, exactly. They said, so if I get in trouble, whose fault is that? Yours. I'll take Barry full blame. Kills me. I'll take complete <laughs> blame for it. I have no problem with it. <laughs> Live at the bike, politically incorrect. <laughs> there we go. There's a cute, there's a cute posting on here about Bart. Said, "Come on, Bart, what's up with the sunglasses?" And uh, someone replied, "It's so no one can guess what he's folding." There you go. There you go. <laughs> ah, Bart, we gotta give you crap. Ace King here for Gus in seat three on the button. And. Uh, See, two is the limper. Now, I, I just don't understand. Why are you limping in in a cutoff seat when nobody else has entered the pot? Why not, even if you're going to enter the pot at all, wait, enter with a raise. Take control of the pot. Now, Gus has raised it up to $30. Barry, I can't lay a hand down Woods. He's going to call with ace-10 off suit. 
And we're going to go heads up here. Kyle has folded 10-4. And the flop is Jack 7-4. Has missed everybody. Kyle's not in the hand. And uh, batter's going to check. Us. They're becoming uh, nemesis. Yeah. Nemesis. Is that a word? Nemesis. That's close enough. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean. They both have a gut shot here. Now the queen on the turn. Gus is still in the lead. He doesn't know this, of course. Barry's, well, Barry's going to fire now. How does Gus not fire that flop, though? They's king. I think Gus and Barry might have some background. Because it seems like when it gets heads up between them two, they play a little differently. They do. They really do mix it up. I mean, it's, it's kind of a strange play. If you're the Ranger with Ace-King pre-flop, and the guy checks to me, why aren't I betting? Because the problem now is you, he's induced this bluff by Barry, right? Sure. And now what does he do? It's okay to induce a bluff if you're going to calm down, but is he going to lay it down? I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know. And now he has to throw away the Ace King, yes? yeah? Yeah. Or are they just having a long chat about their dinner tonight? I don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, and he laid it down, and Barry's going to take the hand. Now, the problem with I can understand not betting the flop. Comes up and go, well, what happens if I get check raised? And you can't play. You can't play scared of check raised. You get check raised, and you either fold or decide if you're still ahead. Exactly. You cross that bridge when you come to it. Um, And uh, let's see, the button is in seat four. That's Morgan. Limped around here so far. I mean, the only thing with ace-king there is if you don't follow through with a continuation bet, you are inducing that bluff. You're giving the pot away. Barry was smart enough to take it. Barry's pretty deep now. Barry's got almost $1,500. And David is actually going to raise it up. He's in the big blind. And he makes it $50 with queen three off suit. Interesting play, David. And he's probably, you wonder if he's going to take this down. Um, no, he's not. Because C2 is going to call. Kyle's going to call with queen seven. Man, I, I got to tell you, I, I was really expecting a really tight, <laughs> passive game, and it, it's anything but that tonight. Which I like. Oh, it's a great game so Much far. Much more fun to watch, huh? Real action tonight. And we're going to see the flop three ways here. The pot is $150, folks. Yes, and this is the hands they have. And the flop is jack, eight, six, all spades. And David is the pre-flop raiser in the big blind, and he, at least he has the queen of spades in his hands. And he's going to bet it. Standard and, continuation bet. But yeah, and Kyle can't. Nice draw. Yeah. Kyle can't call this. No, he can't. Although, I, I mean, I was surprised Kyle called it pre-flop. David takes it down there. What's he, he going to show? He's going to show the queen he and the three. To show. <laughs> and he shows the three. <laughs> well, if he had pocket threes, they were good. <laughs> if he had anything, it was good. So I actually wrote another blog for Under the Gun. If you want to go to liveatthebike.com, you can go to Under the Gun with David Tuckman. Try to keep you up on like uh, what I'm doing every week or so, and oh, I wrote a I new didn't one today. David. Tell yeah. me more. It's pretty well. No, I can't tell you more. You've got to go to liveatthebike.com and read. Liveatthebike.com. Then where? It's just under the gun with David Tuckman. Oh. And it's on the left hand side. And do we hear about private stuff or just poker stuff? No, no, some private stuff. Once in a while, I'll I'll delve into the uh, private <laughs> stuff. I'm actually probably going to write a, another blog in a couple of days. Talk about my ecstatic. Uh, um, Day today, day, my, my wonderful day and my plasma. And your plasma, okay. My plasma. I 42 just, inches of love. <laughs> I, was, does it, I was just telling Isaac that our, on our plasmas in here, careful. it makes people look fat. Careful, does yours do that? Work. I don't like that. No, well, I, I actually, I, I don't. Mine doesn't. Okay, good. I'll just leave it at that. Because I hate Barry's watching a movie and everybody looks fat. 
Barry's going to raise it up to $20 on the button with ace, so 10 of spades. And, um, and wow, we're going to see action five ways. Pot is $100. Bart is in there with 5-3. Go, Bart. I guess enough callers got in there. Bart figured, what the heck, I'm going to take a shot. He's mixing up his play. We like to see that. Well, he had limped in in late position, and when everybody called the raise from Barry, he figured, okay, I'll call. And he's got a gut shot. And it was checked around. Well, now he's got a pair. He's got a pair of threes here, but Michael has the best hand with a pair of sevens. It's interesting how this happens when you end up with a lot of people in a pot. Yeah, and this pot Everyone's scared to bet. Yeah, this pot's $100. Whoever bets is probably going to take it down. Bet 100 Bart. I uh, checked, huh? And and Barry's gonna bet with absolutely nothing here. The river, the turn is a three of clubs, folks. And uh, Barry does not have a club. Bart has a five of clubs. Joseph has a four of clubs. Michael is seriously considering. Michael is. Which is good since he's actually winning. But it's hard to know that when you have three clubs and an over card on the board. Well, the thing is, you got to look at this hand here. Would Barry check? Would Barry check queen on the flop on the button? You know, would he check a queen? Would he check any pair on the on the board on the on the flop? Probably not, right? Probably not. Would he check a flush draw? Probably not. Which means he's probably on a stone cold bluff. Maybe. Now, obviously, we see the cards, but still, you can you can piece together a hand this way. You think about it. What would Barry check? And Michael threw his hand away. Even knowing that, it's funny. It's like when I sit and do this myself. Even knowing that, when I think the same thing you just said, I still will fold five seven. Well, I don't mind Michael's fold more okay. more so because there's three players behind Michael. Yeah. If I was Michael, if I was in Michael's spot, but I had, if I had Michael's hand, uh -huh. but I was in Bart's position, mm -hmm. I would definitely call. I actually might raise. You're a gambler. But you know, but you got to look. Joseph's still there, <laughs> and Joseph's still thinking about it with fours. You know, you still got to worry about Kyle, who is a six. And then you got Bart, who has five three. I don't think Barry gets through all these guys. Everybody has something except for Barry, the better. Yeah, everybody's got a. Interesting if he takes this down. I I just don't think so. And, no. and C1 makes it $100 to go. <laughs> yeah, a nice play by Joseph there. I like that, yeah. Yeah, you know, he's got a four of clubs also. He's got the gut shot straight flush draw. Unfortunately, Bart has the five of clubs. Psych it! <laughs> They're giving Bart crap. And <laughs> then he was going to fold, and he did. Yeah. And I like the play here by Joseph. Bart's drinking. Good. <laughs> Loosen him up. <laughs> Buy him a girly drink or two. Something Get him a couple of Miller Lights. I'll pay for him. with an umbrella. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and Barry's going to call. Now, you wonder if Joseph does not improve. And I say improve, catch a five or a four. Really a five. And if he checks to Barry, and Barry bets a lot, can he get him off the hand? I think he can. I think maybe that's what Barry's intention is. I would assume so. I mean, the pot is now maybe about $300. The turn is a six. Wow, and seat two, Kyle would have made trip sixes. Now, Joseph's put in a really big spot because he's really deep. And this is the kind of spot where Joseph's in a, in a, he, he's actually in a tough spot here because he is, might not be as comfortable with $1,000 in front of him, mm -hmm. while Barry is very comfortable. Right. Barry plays the 2550 game. He plays the 5100 game, while Joseph rarely goes higher than this. Right. Bet 200. Yeah, don't even but look at this. He's going to put a $200 bet in there. And Barry's And takes it down. Nice play by Joseph. I almost thought for a second I heard Barry say I'm all in. So that would be beautiful. And Joseph is, I got to tell you, Joseph is really using his image today. Nobody would suspect this stuff from Joseph. Good for him. Um, and he's that's using his image. He looks to me like he's a tight player who knows what he's doing. That's, that's what I get from first impression. It's great. It's really great. I mean, that's the way to win in this game. No limit hold'em. You, you play it tight. You play it aggressive. And you pick one or two spots a mm -hmm. night or even one or two spots every couple of days mm -hmm. that are opportune spots where you can bluff. And I think this is a very fun table. It's having a lot of fun talking to each other. People didn't really pay attention when he turned over the 10-6 offsuit against those aces. So they're not really watching. that he's, you know, he's paying attention to the game, and he's making plays here. Gus is, looks like he's going to raise it up a little bit with... Eight six off suit the beauty, 
Everybody's mixing it up a little bit. <laughs> now, see, there is definitely something between Gus and Barry here because um, Barry has 9 6 off suit, but before he called, he said, Oh, it was Gus? Okay, I'm going to call. So they've got, they've got some history. We don't know what it is, it's definitely history. That's his random rave generator. We've got David in with King Jack of Hearts. I like those kind of hands when I'm on the button. And we did seat nine, Jeff. Pocket Rockets. All right, now, how do you play this? You're in the small <laughs> blind. You're actually in the big blind, sorry. Three people, one person's raised and two people have called. The pot is now $75. I think you've got to raise this, I don't you? I think i got to raise another $75 at least. At least, right. I mean, at least it shows weakness. If you make it 100 to go or you make it 90 to go, you really get rid of the, get rid of the riffraff. Sure. You Maybe you get it heads up. You feel a little more comfortable knowing that. Well, Gus did raise. Originally, everyone just called. No one really raised. Yeah, I imagine Barry's obviously going to lay this down. Well, well, you never know with Barry. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> I just don't think now don't Barry's count got. Don't your chickens before they're hatched. I know Barry's what? got plenty of money. <laughs> Barry's got plenty of money where he has implied odds. But the yeah. problem is, I don't think Jeff's got enough money to make this call worthwhile. Remember, it's not necessarily just you have to have enough money. Your opponent has to have enough money also. Right. And now that Barry's called, does that bring David in, who's got a nice, uh, you know, King Jack suited on the button? I think he might be considering. And I think a he's going to move in. Woo! Oh, my. Jeff loves this. Beautiful. Well, you know what? Jeff I is singing hallelujah to himself. Yeah, I, I think David, I think David would put Jeff on a steal, you know, thinking maybe this guy's trying to pick up the $75. Right. Uh, and he just picked the wrong time. He definitely did. He can always get lucky. That happens all the time. A couple of emails we'll get to in a second. I have to call, but I thought you were making a move. And that's what actually what David says. He said he thought Jeff was making a move. I thought you were making a move, but I've got a call. There's just too much money in there. And sure enough, he only had, oh, look at the flop. Wow. And that's a monster flop for him. And there's Ken. He's got a lot of outs, folks. Oh. But that's not one of them. He made it. Wow. You hate to see aces go down. You really do. Man, he had a lot, a lot of outs there. Um, he actually, any 10 would have given him a straight, any jack would have given him two pair, any king would have given him trips, any heart would have given him a flush. I mean, he had probably half the deck. Jeff dodged a humongous bullet. Yeah, and you can't fault, I mean, can't fault Davey. He thought Jeff was making a move, picked the wrong time, and then when, obviously, when Jeff moves over the top of them all in, at that point, you kind of look at it and go, well... I'm getting about seven to one on my money with King Jack of Hearts. Well, he had, and he only Even had with aces, like less than a hundred left, exactly. I think, right? And you put 450 in, he can't. What are you going to do? Fold that? Right. Email here from Erin Woods. This is uh, Barry's daughter. She says, "Oh no, isn't he cute though?" And that's Morgan's girlfriend, Barry's daughter. And she just wanted to correct us. It's actually Morgan Keller. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We had it down as Morgan Kelly. We got it. I think the nickname we're giving him is Mo, though. <laughs> we're giving him Mo. Mo Kelly. And Mo Keller. And there he is. Another email here from Mauricio saying hi. He says, "Hey guys. Hey, is Bart playing with his own money? How does that work?" And he said, "Yes, actually. When you're propping here, you actually do play with your own money. The casino only pays you. They pay you a salary, and they get you get your rake back." That's right. Um, but you pay with your, you play with your own money. So if you win, great for you. If you lose, hey, that sucks. Hey, yeah, life sucks. Right. So you, that's why really you, you see a lot of props playing a little tighter, cause such as Bart is doing, because you have to do it every day, eight hours a day on tables that really suck. So you can't afford to play fast and loose like some of these other guys. Morgan's raised it up here with Ace Queen of Spades, and it's called in three spots. Seat eight's got tens. Morgan and hits top pair, and yeah. Barry hits a flush draw, which we know. Oh, this will be interesting. It's going to be very interesting. Yeah, well, Morgan's got top pair, Barry's got flush draw, but it's funny because... It's Morgan against Barry. Right, and uh, that's Barry's money. <laughs> <laughs> but I, got, I, I don't think Barry's going to soft play him anyway. No, he's not. <laughs> it's a pretty easy lay down from Michael there. He's got tens. But he calls. And yeah, this is a hand that Michael's got to get away from. You get a bet from Morgan and a call from Barry. Your tens can't be good, especially, I mean... You don't even have the ten of clubs in your hand. Right. So if the ten of There's clubs... There's the ten of clubs. Now he's screwed. That's what, that's what I'm trying to say. 
if your set actually, if you get lucky enough to hit your set, uh -huh. it's not necessarily good, especially with a board like that. It's a one line into a straight anyway. Right. Now he needs the board to pair. Yeah, and Barry or has now got trouble. the nut flush. And Maybe it, Michael was just thinking he was getting kind of short stacked. He's ready to make a move. Yep. Yeah, I got to tell you, though, SP surfing here, Michael, he, he really misplayed this hand. Pocket tens. Once in a while, I can take one off if I've got the ten of clubs in my hand. But with a board like that, queen, jack, eight, uh -huh. there's no way. I mean, just throw the hand away. Pick your battles. Now he's got to pray. I mean, I guess you're hoping for an offsuit nine. <laughs> you know, you really don't want a ten there. What, I mean, I guess like a red nine is okay. Of course, Barry calls. And he takes it down. Wow, and the river <laughs> is a jack, and Michael sucks out there. My favorite, my favorite line, he knew it was coming. Oh, David. man. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, Michael, that's just a gift for Michael there. He gets runner, runner, full house. I mean, he's in such bad shape. The only way he wins that hand, really, is if he gets a red nine. <laughs> or something like that. Congratulations, Michael. That's the suck out of the evening so far. That might have that might have been the first pot I've actually see, seen Barry lose. Not to not to his fault, to the card's fault. Yeah, he loses plenty of pots when it's always his own fault, right? <laughs> well, speaking of Barry Woods, he's got Ace King here, and the player after him, David's got pocket sevens. Be interesting how it's played. The button is in seat nine. But Gus is going to continue raising with kind of uh, mediocre holdings. And this one's in early position. It's one thing to raise with uh, kind of strange hands in late position, but in early position to raise with uh, eight three of spades. <laughs> nice blackjack hand, but not really that good for hold'em, huh? It does, however, make good action for us. Yeah. And look at, look at Kelsey now. He doesn't know what to do with the sevens. There's some guys that you just naturally want to call them by their last name. <laughs> were you a Pepe or were you a Nicole? I was definitely a Nicole. You were definitely a Nicole. When I was little, it was like Pepe Le Pew and, you know, little, oh. kids, little kids are bad. Yeah, they are. Well, my last name being Tuckman, you can imagine how I got teased. No, I can't. Can't imagine? No. Tell me. Well, we got an interesting <laughs> hand here. <laughs> Kyle in seat two's got eights. And David's going to lay it down. And Barry's now uh, bought himself the button. And is Kyle going to call this with eights? We see that an eight is out. Yeah, he's, a, he's got a better hand than Barry, but he's out of position. If he doesn't hit a set, it'll be really difficult to play the hand. Both other eights are out. We see. He does not know this, but we do. Gus and Jeff both have an eight in their hand. And I don't think Gus is going to call this. Yeah, I have a feeling he's probably not. No, and he's, he's going to show that he actually was raising with crap. <laughs> Mixing it up a little bit there. Yeah, I growing up, I was definitely a Tuckman or a Tuck. You know, I don't think anybody ever called me my first name. I think guys are a lot more their last names than girls are. Yeah, okay. Have you ever met a girl, really, that you just want to call her her last name? Yeah, I haven't met many girls like that. Really? Anyway, uh, chip count here. I'll get to that in a second. Oh, <laughs> uh, Joseph in the lead with over thirteen hundred dollars. Barry with a thousand. Jeff with a thousand. Now all these players have bought in for five hundred. Uh, a couple of people have a couple of uh, two buy-ins though. I want to say uh, Michael's in there for a couple of buy-ins. I'm not sure who else, but we'll get word of that in a second. David's in there for an extra buy-in, and uh, Morgan Keller is obviously in for two buy-ins. We've got pocket queens here. Kyle in seat two. Oh, and Bart is stepping in it again. I mean, he cannot get out of the crap today. He raised it. Bart has ace queen of hearts, fo folks. Oh, and unfortunately for him, Kyle has pocket queens, and Joseph has pocket tens. Uh. I mean, Bart is in just terrible shape here. David's got an ace here. So, I mean, there's only a couple aces left. And it's like every single time Bart raises, somebody comes over the top of him. Oh, Bart. You can't, I mean, I, I can't really fault Bart yet. Somebody I mean, give him a massage. He lays it down. And uh, Kelsey's going to lay it down. Now, see, Kelsey, David there, yeah. clearly a Kelsey to me.
Okay. You can call me Peppy if you want. Peppy? Yeah. I like Peppy. <laughs> and Joseph lays down tens on the button. Wow. And well, he, Kyle showed it. I think I've nice noticed layout. Kyle helping Joseph a lot with his chips. I wonder that they're maybe they're friends. And Joseph said, you know what? Don't call me. Yeah. Joseph just said, I'm not interested. Tens against. Right. Well, I mean, Kyle might have said, don't call me because he was scared of very, like, very scared well that he had an ace or a kid. <laughs> Oftentimes, if I have a Queens, you know, and yeah. a, a pretty decent player is called the first raise, sometimes I don't want him to call. Right. Because I figure I'm not going to get much action from him anyway. I know. It's such a bittersweet thing, isn't it, having a good hand preflop? I mean, you want to call someone to call, but then you don't want someone to call. It's very, it's what makes this game so exciting. Got a nice email from Wyatt Godin. Says hi, Nicole. Hi, David. Wayne hi, Tang, my favorite dealer. Are you not? You're not superstitious, are you? No. Okay. No, not in that way. I just like his name, Wayne Tang. <laughs> no, I'm not at all. Or like, oh, that dealer killed me, or oh, that dealer gave me. I'm not at all like that. I just love his name. I got you. Okay. Fair enough. Every time I see him, it makes me very happy. <laughs> I'm getting word here that Barry's cheating. I'm checking out two plus two. To Barry's cheating on Tuckman's wife with a man. There we go. <laughs> Some rumors start, you know. All right, we've got a whole bunch of nothing in on this flop. Yeah, it was limped around. Uh, Gus is going to take a shot at it with a pair of nines. He's got bottom pair. And he takes it down. And he takes it down. Flop was king, jack, nine. Nobody had higher than six high. And the, uh, what's it called? What's what called? The rabbit cam? Yeah, the rabbit cam showed actually another king and jack. Oh, wow. So his nine high would have been good anyway. Yeah. He would have, he would have ended up being very yeah. good. Yeah. Button has moved over to Gus. King, queen in the small blind for Morgan. Tough hand to play out of position. Often a hand you don't really want to raise out of position either, so let's see how he plays it. Bart is our big blind here. Oh, and Bart's got ace king in the oh, big blind. Oh, now Morgan could get in trouble here and if he calls this. Well, look at this. C1 Joseph is going to make a play here. I think he's raising Bart's blind because he figures Bart's an easy target. <laughs> hey, i got to be honest, you know what? <laughs> Bart doesn't really call raises unless he has something. But he's going to re-raise here. I'd raise, I'd raise Bart's raise every time. I mean, Bart's blind every time. When he comes back at me, I just throw it away. And I think that's what Joseph's going to do. Problem now is Morgan might get involved. I think he might, and I think he might get in trouble here unless he catches the queen. Makes it $85 to go. He's out of position. Joseph can't like his hand anymore. <laughs> and nah, he smiles he and throws it away. And what See is Morgan going to do here? Uh, Morgan's got $60 more to Morgan. He's only got king, queen off. So yeah, he's going to like that. Nice, nice, nice. Wow. And look at that. Bart has won his first hand of the night. Woo! Knock him dead, Bart. <laughs> he has a smile on his face. This is good. Memoirs of a gay show. He's talking about Memoirs of a Gay Show. It's his favorite movie. Is it really? Well, all the Asian chicks. Yeah. <laughs> He doesn't actually like the movie. I don't actually oh. think he even knows what he, anything about it. <laughs> yeah, has he even seen it? No, he saw it. He, he saw it. I think he's seen it twice already. He actually, Bart had a uh, date last night. With an Asian girl? An Asian girl met him here at the Best Casino, and I met her. She was cute. Interesting. She was cute. So Asian chicks are to men what, what no, no. Latin men are to women, huh? No, no, no. Asian chicks are to Bart. Oh, oh okay. Bart. No, I know a lot of men. I know a lot of men that like Asian chicks. And Bart makes it Bart makes it $50 more with ace queen in the small blind. We get a he's, bunch of limpers in there. He's on a rush. Actually, I'm trying to figure out if Kyle raised it pre-flop. Or was it limped around? <laughs> trying to figure out if it was limped around or if there was a raise before it got to Bart. Nobody wants to tell me if it was raised before it got to Bart. We're, we're having a discussion to I know, I'm sorry. Here, David. <laughs> you know, I mentioned it that is I a, like It is Latin a poker men. show. <laughs> and we can't get off the subject. 
And, and Kyle's going to call the $50 raise, and the pot is now about $120. Sorry, Heads I'm, up, I'm here. I'm Ace queen you. versus fives. Pretty good flop for Kyle, but does he know he's good? Now, Bart is out of position. How is he going to play Ace queen? He missed. Flop is 9 9 6. Couple of spades. And Kyle is put to the test here. Does Bart have Ace king, Ace queen, or does Bart have a higher pair? And Bart's going to bet 100 into about a $100 nice. pot, and he takes it down. Woo! Two in a row! Ace queen, ace queen off suit there. Out of position can really be a tough hand to play. Yeah. Bart has quite a, has had quite a few what we'd call good hands. They just haven't held up until now. Two in a row, that's good. Yeah. Well, that one actually, he, he was behind. He actually earned that pot. He had to bet it. If he checks it, he is behind. Kyle had two pair there, nines and fives. Button is in seat five. That's Bart. C2 is raising with pocket nines. My favorite pair. I don't know why. Don't ask me. Okay. <laughs> won't ask. And he makes it. And he makes it. Seat two made it uh, $50 to go. And C1 Barry. one actually has sevens, yes. Barry's going to call this with 8-10 of hearts. And you wonder with another caller in there, is now Joseph going to take it off? He's in there for $5. It's $45 more to him. And he's not going to call. And we're going to see it heads up here. $100 pot, Kyle versus Barry. Flop is king, 6-6, six, six, rags. I mean, king, 6-6, six, six, rainbow. Yeah, pretty straightforward there. Kyle bets about a $75 bet. Barry's got nothing and throws away. But all three cards are over mine. <laughs> Barry didn't want to waste the time there at the table, I guess. Just figured he'd fold before anything even bet went in there. And the rabbit cam showed that Kyle was good with his pocket knives. Wayne Tang, my man, he's good at the rabbit cam. Once again, we are live at the bike, folks. I'm David Tuckman here with the lovely Nicole Pepe. That's right. And uh, we are watching No Limit Hold'em. Blinds are five and five. The minimum buy in this game is 300. It's a restricted buying game, but there's a lot more money on the table. There is. And C2, Kyle's on a little bit of a rush. He has pocket queens here, and he's raised it up. And, and Barry, and Barry, I'm sorry, Bart calls here with 6-3 offsuit in late <laughs> position. He's... he's Feeling it a little bit, huh? Yeah, well, it's a small enough raise. He figures the implied odds are there if he hits his hand. And we're going to see it four ways. Pot $60. And wow. wow. Oh, my gosh. Bart is in trouble. <laughs> oh, Bart is dead on this flop. The flop is queen 6-6, six, six, folks. Kyle has flopped top full house. Bart has trip sixes. And if you ever talk about reverse implied odds, here is it. Oh, boy. Oh, Bart just stepped in a big pile of dog dew. Oh, my oh. gosh. Boy. You know, Kyle was, is Kyle is just wow. He's I was dancing in the pants. questioning Kyle's small raise pre-flop, but uh, again, it turns out in his favor. It's interesting. Hey, you How know what? Works. Sometimes no limit hold them. You don't really want to take down just the blinds. You want to win these big pots, and this is how you win big pots. Yeah. And Bart is almost drawing dead. Uh. He needs the case six to come out on the river. And he can't. He can't put Kyle on queens. I would. The last thing I'd be thinking Kyle has is queens. No, no. He's got to think. He's got to think he's good here. He, Bart is just thinking of how much money to bet. Uh, and he's going to go all in on the river. Well, we'll see what happens here. I mean, he's got to put. He's got to put Kyle on like, king queen or ace queen, and Bart is going to bet a hundred. Hundred dollars. And Kyle's doing a good acting job Into here. about a two hundred and fifty dollar pot. The problem is Kyle doesn't need to act. If he would just raise him, the hand would be over. Yeah, he just doesn't know that. That's the problem. Right. And the river is a ten, and that might be an action killer if Bart puts him on Ace King. But I don't think Bart puts him on Ace King. Now Bart is thinking, and that that is a little bit of an action killer for Kyle. Did Kyle check here? Well, you're just wondering. Wait a second. Would the guy call with Ace King? I mean, Kyle has played this so slow. Why would you not raise? Right. Man, if you raise, I, it's one of the reasons I hate slow playing. If you played this fast, all of Bart's money is in your hands. Yep. And now Bart might stop and think, 
But the only thing is, can you really put Kyle in ace-king here? I mean, think about it. He called the flop, and he called the turn. Would he call with ace-king? So if you put Bart on, if you put Kyle on king-queen or queen-jack, your hand's still good. And, and he checks check. it. Good job, Bart. He saved a lot of money there. Kyle lost a lot of money there. Wow, and you, you wonder if Kyle's acting job, Bart had a read on him and figured, wait a second, Kyle is really strong here. And I got to tell you, man. Wow, if only that, Kyle knew how close he was to making a lot of money. You know what, Kyle's gonna go, <laughs> Kyle might go home winning money tonight, mm -hmm. but I got to be honest, that's, that's the kind of hand, that's the kind of night that drives me nuts because as far as I'm concerned, whatever money Bart has in front of him, I just lost that. Because it all should have been mine. You have no idea what I had. And Bart did not play it slow. He bet the flop. He bet the turn. And Bart Kyle never had. did anything. No. And I got to ask Bart if he had a read on him. If he just thought, you know what, this guy is acting yeah. too much. He's doing too much Hollywood. I think this guy's got a monster. Well, Bart's a good player, so I would believe. Oh that my gosh! Pocket aces for Joseph McLean there in seat one, and he's going to raise it up. Makes it. Wow, and seat one, Joseph makes it $25 to go, and Kyle is going to make it 50 to go with pocket fives. Interesting. Nothing like protecting somebody else's aces. Especially when he's your friend. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, it, it, it really upsets me when I'm playing a no luck game, <laughs> and I don't get as much as I could have gotten. You know what I mean? I look at the room, I go, oh, man, I could have bet three or $400 more. Well, I think this is good that Kyle will watch this and he'll learn a lot about his game, I think, from that one hand. Now, this is one of those cases where if I'm Joseph, I just smooth call this. It's already heads up, okay? Actually, Barry's called. Okay. But it's three-handed. I might just call this. I have a feeling Joseph is the type of player he's going to raise it up here. I would imagine, too. Especially with Barry, and you never know what Barry has. You don't want him catching two uh, and a three on the flop, you know? I, I understand what you're saying. Actually, Barry's re-raised it. I'm oh sorry. Oh, my goodness gracious. I, I didn't get that word there. I apologize. Donna had gone over to the bathroom. <laughs> she went to spend a penny. Too much, too much. And uh, Barry has re-raised it to 250. <laughs> and I got to tell you, if I'm Joseph, do you just call? Now I just call. I definitely just That's call Barry. That's a good Barry. question. Because, but then are you letting Kyle in? What do you mean letting him in? It's $200 more. I don't know. Just a question. I, there's no way Kyle <laughs> calls. You know what? If Kyle calls $200, fine. I have no problem with that. Okay. At this point, I don't need to protect my aces anymore. It's probably going to get heads up between me and Barry. Yeah. The button is in seat. But look at that. Joseph is, is re-raising re him, and he's going to let Barry up the hook. i got to tell you. I, ch I, I call that bet. Yeah. I check blind. Okay. I let Barry bet another $300 into it, and then I re-raise all in without even looking. Okay. And I say, you know what? If Barry outflops me with my aces, so be it. But I'm going to let him trap himself. Yeah. I'm not going to let him off the hook. And Joseph's going to take this down, and he wins what is about $300 in dead money. And some people can say, well, hey, you know what? He won it without risking anything. Right. I, so think, I think I don't you're mind a gambling player, a little bit because yeah I under I I see I when I sit at the table and I have aces and my heart's racing and there's three people in the pot I do the same thing I think you're a better player because you do need to do that you do you need to be able to let people in to make that money and if you don't how much money are you going to make at this game but well, I can understand Joe's play because that's how I play right I mean my only thinking is see there are certain hands I don't want to really gamble with but mm -hmm. do I really mind okay I've got pocket aces mm -hmm. and I'm heads up with a guy who just raised it up to two hundred and fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. Well, he can't be beating me. Right. I'm probably in pretty good shape. I mean, if it's a sane player, he's probably got kings or queens. Right. Right? So in that case, <laughs> great. I'm in really great shape. And if not, he has king deuce. And if, if he's not a sane player, he's got king deuce, and I'm still in fine shape. Right. I just don't want to give away at that point there. That's one of the few times where I will smooth call with, with aces. You are teaching me a lesson here, David. But hey, you know oh, what? Oh, how I learn. Who knows? I mean, <laughs> the river could come. I mean, the turn, the flop could come out deuce, deuce, five, See, that's and go always, broke. That's what's always in my mind. You know, some crap. I let that crap in, and then they flop two deuces. Yeah, hey, that happens. You know, it happens all the time. Part of the game, right? Yeah, that's true. And Barry's going to re-raise again here. No, Barry's going to raise. I'm sorry. He makes it thirty-five dollars in pocket sixes. Button is in seat eight. <laughs> it's 
And <laughs> Kyle's going to call this with Ace Rag. He's got Ace Seven, one of my Ace Seven offsuit, one of my least favorite hands. And uh, that's going to bring in Morgan. And we're going to go three ways now. The pot is $110 to the flop. Queen Jack offsuit is one of my least favorite hands. And wow, Barry's flop the set here. Flop the flop is 10 six deuce. Let's see how Barry. Barry plays it. It's not a very threatening board. Yeah, it's a beautiful, yeah, it's beautiful flop. You got a rainbow board. There's no straight draw. But Barry's going to bet it. One thing I love about Barry's game is he bets his bluffs. He also bets his hands. So yep. it's tough to know where he's at. I like Joseph was talking to Barry after the last hand saying, why don't you call? It was only 600 bucks to Barry. And he said, that's like a straddle in the game you in the games you play. Right. <laughs> Which is true. Big games that Barry plays. And Morgan is calling him. And, more, and it's heads up between Barry and Morgan. <laughs> I think he might just want to crack Barry. How much of my money you got left there? Check. Well, I get, hey, is there, is there a strategy here? And, and look at this. Morgan's got nothing. Morgan's got queen high here. And, and Barry, Barry checks it down. Yeah. Now, i got to tell you, you wonder, <laughs> is there a strategy in trying to win more of your yeah. own money back? No, which is why Barry checked it down. <laughs> I mean, I guess if he breaks his, uh, if he breaks his, his future son-in-law, question mark. Um, and I apologize if that pretending makes anybody uncomfortable. It's just easier to say than... Daughter's boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, step boyfriend, dad in law. Um, but I guess he'd have to reach in his pocket and give him another $500. Oh, oh, Do you have a two plus two uh, name? No, I you don't. don't. Okay. I've actually, you know, honestly, I've never watched the archives. Really? Bad me. Bad wow. Bad me. Amazing. Uh, the Weird. Flop, flop here is <laughs> king seven six. Barry's got top pair. I mean, I'm surprised you you haven't considering I mean all the players that you play in. You can really I get a good uh, good read on some of these players you know, that you play against. After working all day, I don't really want to go home and watch poker. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. Fair enough. Fair enough. Barry's going to bet his top pair, and I imagine everybody's going to fold this, and he takes it down. Now, we get an email here from, uh, um, I'm going to say his name, actually. It's Tom Rajak. It's, it's Ray Jack, he goes by. And he says, hi, Nicole and David. And he talks about a hand that he played in. And we don't really get into specifics. We try not to get into specifics in terms of um, hand analysis mm -hmm. from emails, obviously, because other people wouldn't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. So if you have a question... I can either, if you actually want to go to 2plus2.com and send me that question to Friar Tuck, or you can send it to Bart Hansen. His name is Bart Hansen. <laughs> My name is Friar Tuck on the 2plus2 form. I will uh, definitely respond to you there. Just send me a private message over at 2plus2. Yeah, and we need actually, why don't we... Uh, we need uh, 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 definitely a 2 plus 2 membership name for you. So we do. Anybody wants to come in and post. <laughs> we need, they, we, they get to make it up? No, no, no. But, but, well, they can vote for you at least. Oh. Figure out what you should be. Um, we have a question here, actually. From Phone Bone. We'll get to it in a second. Do you guys have any sort of ethical guidelines? Like if Bart takes a hand off and comes and asks you guys, am I being bluffed? No, we, cannot, we don't do that. We cannot yeah. do that, and we wouldn't do that. Um, even if Bart had been in here for an hour, we wouldn't let him go out and play in the game with people because he just watched the play exactly. for an hour. So, no, yeah, we don't, we don't allow that. King three deuce flop here. Morgan's got top pair, but that's not going to stop Kyle. Kyle's going to bet with bottom pair, and Morgan's going to raise. Nice play. Morgan raises up to the minimum up to $100. Nice play here. Very play nice it aggressive. Play got the top pair. I imagine this is going to end the hand right here, unless Kyle wants to take one off for $50. The pot is now about $210. Getting about 3 to 1 on his money. Actually, I'm sorry, almost 4 to 1 on his money. Yeah, a couple of things here. We, 
when we're playing in the game, we don't come in the booth. And if we're ever commentating on a particular game, we won't play in that game at all that night. Right. Um, just kind of our, we've set precedent there. So. We have a question about how to find the 2 plus 2 form again. Let me and try. if you want to go to liveatthebike.com, we have a link to the 2 plus 2 form. Or you can actually go to 2 plus 2.com, spelled out. Go to forums. Go to World Poker Tour and other events. And then click on the Live at the Bike thread for January 24th. And Michael's going to raise it up here. We haven't heard much from Michael since his 10s, since he sucked out with those 10s. And he raises it up with pocket jacks. And I think he's going to just take it down without a flop, and he does. <laughs> Mary just had some table talk. Said that everyone should dress as a card that they like, and they're going to dress Bart. As a queen. As a queen. What, what <laughs> card did you dress as? As an ace, of course. Who as the ace, okay. Who wouldn't? I've always wanted to be a six. Oh, okay. Somebody whose English isn't that good, they might, you know, think I'm sex. Sh sure, and sex is not better than poker, right? Exactly. Oh! <laughs> Pocket kings. Wow, back to back. Michael's got some big hands. You've got kings this time, and he's going to raise it up again. And he makes it... And he makes it 35 kind of odd. He made it $50 with jacks and 35 with kings. I, I'm always a proponent for raising the same amount with your hands. Yes, you don't yes. want to give away information. And Joseph's going to call this with jack 10 suited. And we got a heads up. Now, Joseph's in position on him. That's really He's the uh, best hand to crack big pairs, is it not? It's one of them, yeah. I mean, I was gonna, I'll get to it in a second. And Joseph's got overcards with a gut shot, but there's no diamond on the board. The board is 976. Joseph would need an eight, and only an eight here. No diamonds. And there's no, no jack, diamonds out no there now. No ten. I would let this go. Yeah, if there's another, if there was at least one diamond out there, you know, maybe you can play it, mm -hmm. especially if your opponent is very deep and you think you might get paid off. But in this case here, with no diamonds, you know, you don't even know if you hit a jack or ten. It's good. Right. You know, Michael could be in there with queens. Michael could even be in there with jacks. Right. He could be in there with anything, and Joseph is not good right now. That's the point I'd be thinking. So yeah. I'm pretty sure Joseph's probably going to throw this away. Oh. No, he's going to call what it. What do I know? He's going to call it. And the pot is quickly $300. And the turn is a four. The problem also with Joseph's hand is if an eight, come, it's a, if an eight comes to one line or to a straight, is he really going to get paid off at six, seven, eight, nine? And the four on the turn here, and also Michael just does not have that much money. I think Michael's going to put in for 200 this time. And Joseph's going to have to lay this down. The pot is, the pot is now 500, 200 to call. He's getting two and a half to one on his money, but he's drawing basically to four outs and four outs only. Yes, and he's had enough of that. And he throws it away. Nice play by Michael, takes it down. You know, when I'm going for a gut shot, oftentimes uh, the deciding factor if I want to go for it or not is, first of all, do I think I will get paid off if I hit my hand? Okay. Um, and how much can I get paid off? Those are the biggest two factors there. You know, sometimes I will call a $30 raise or a $40 bet even if I think I might get paid off to the tune of seven or $800 if my, if my straight is completely concealed. Right. You know, I'm getting 20 to 1 there. We've got pocket kings in seat four with Morgan and, po and Bart has pocket aces. Does he have aces? I see, I see one ace. He does. And the other two aces we see oh, are wow. out. Oh, wow. The other two aces are gone. Wow. And look at this. Kings on the button for Morgan. And Bart's got aces. Now and Barry has tens. Now, this could get really interesting. This now could get ugly. Now, if Bart decides to smooth call, thinking he can smooth call and trap his opponent, he's, he's not going to like it. But he's going to re-raise this. He is going to re-raise this. And he's going to make it 200 to go. And the pot is quickly about $350. It's $200 to Barry here, and he's only got tens. But I got to tell you, if Morgan bets 100, you got to remember actually, seat nine made it 40. Morgan made it 100, and Bart has now made it 200. Tens are no good. Right. You know, there's no way tens can be good here. 
However, Barry's a gambler. He's going to flip a coin, I think. And that looks, it looks <laughs> like that it. or he's going to pay for his massage. <laughs> Interesting, he pays for his massage with cash. I guess he wants to know how much he's up or down for the night. Sure. And uh, it's to Barry here. Someone call a clock on him. Now, this is one of those <laughs> things. Now, Jeff has got a pretty big hand as well. Bar Jeff actually has ace jack, not ace queen. And it's going to get back to him, and he's got $170 to call. I imagine it's going to be a pretty easy lay down for him. And there was another ace uh, rag out earlier. Yeah, I mean, so he, he, Bart is. You raise, you get re raised, and then somebody else re raises you. Ace jack is, ace, ace jack is garbage. Ace jack is no good. I mean, to be honest, uh, tens are garbage. There's no way tens can be good here. And he's got to know that. I mean, let's think of the hands that Bart would re-raise somebody in the small blind with right. and make it $200 to go. And is Morgan just going to call, or is he going to re-raise them all in? I have a feeling he might go all in here. With it's kings. a tough hand. I mean, I, you can't you fault can't Morgan here. Away. Yeah, with kings, how can you get away? You can get away from kings if you're really, really deep in a no-limit game. But in this case, I don't know. And it's heads up here, aces versus kings. The pot is about $500, folks. Oh, and the Beautiful flop is eight high. Flop. Beautiful. And not to mention, I mean, Bart's even got the ace of diamonds and the ace of hearts. Morgan's obviously got the same cards. He's in really bad shape. Oh, and aces versus kings here. Turn is an eight, and the river is a nine, and Bart is going to take the pot down. Takes down what amounts to about a $900 pot. Nice job, Bart. He wanted, he was talking to Barry, telling him to push it all in. Yeah, I mean, it's an easy lay down. You've got you to realize, obviously, tens there. When you get a raise, a re-raise, and then somebody else comes out of the top, you know, you're probably in really bad shape. I mean, it's not a, it's not a tournament where somebody's doing this with ace-queen, ace-king. I mean, somebody's got to have an overpair to your right. tens. <laughs> and, uh, and you can't fault Morgan there at all. I mean, no. if, if you reversed it and you gave Morgan aces and Bart kings... You know, all the money's in front of Morgan. I mean, Bart's going to lose it, too. Exactly. Kings are very hard to get away from. Especially when you've only got four or $500 behind. Yes. <laughs> I mean, would Bart make the same play with queens? Probably. Got Bart's got a big again. hand here again. Jeez. Well, but David's got kings, and Bart has ace-king of spades, and Bart has the button, <laughs> and Bart has raised it up to $25, and it's to David. And Gus is in there with 6-7. Now, this is one of those times if Gus only calls, I mean, sorry, if David only calls, he knows that Gus is going to be in there also. And David's going to re-raise him up to $100. I'm imagining Gus will probably lay 6-7 of diamonds down. Now, David is not that deep, and is Bart going to re-raise him with Ace-King of Spades? Remember, David has made this move a couple of times with, like, King Jack. <laughs> and Bart he moves all in. in. Really? Bart moved all in, and David called. And David called, and it's ace-king versus kings here. Well, Bart needs an ace. Yeah, uh, David's about a 70-30 favorite here. Let's see what happens, though. And there's one spade out there, a couple of tens. And, oh! and Bart Boy. sucks out. And Bart sucks out. And you know what? You can't blame Bart. I was going to say, you know, David showed he made a move earlier with King Jack. He kind of planted that seed in Bart's head yes. and in all of our heads that he was capable of doing that. And Bart figured, you know what? He might be making this move with Ace Queen, Ace Jack. or And you know what? If the guy has pocket fives or pocket sixes or even pocket tens, it's a race. Right. You know? David set him up and just got, you know, got unlucky, obviously. And Bart's on a rush. Yeah, look at that. Last two hands, Bart has won, <coughs> I want to say, about $1,000. He's never going to come back to commentating. Probably not. <laughs> well, hey, you know, No Limit Hold'em, the one thing I love about No Limit Hold'em is you can really be patient and disciplined if you're aggressive because one, two, three hands a night, that's all you need. Yep. We see Tommy Huffnagel. And uh, Tommy Huffnagel is a regular here. He, he won the World Series in, I want to say, 1997 or something like that. 
He won a bracelet for uh, Stud High Low. And he, he'll play one hand the whole night. Wow. But win two thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, and that's all. That's all you need. Two thousand yeah. a day is a good day. He picks his spot, you know. He picks his spot and he gets his money in there with the best hand, and, and that's it. Flop is Jack Nine Four Rainbow. Kyle's got top two pair, well, so yeah. and nobody else has much of anything. Michael's got second pair. And uh, well, but it looks like. Michael made it ten dollars, and uh, Kyle called. And David calls as well, and we're going to see it three ways. And the turn is a four; that doesn't change anything. Kyle's got three pair now. Obviously, three pair don't play, but he's in really good shape. I mean, Michael is Michael is actually drawing dead. Yeah, Michael's drawing dead. David could catch a six. He's got a two outer. And they check it around all the way over to Kyle. He bets twenty dollars. And David calls. Wow. Real stubborn with those sixes, yeah, huh? David might be steaming a little bit in the last pot. And the river's an ace. That doesn't change anything either. Might be a scary card if you're Kyle. Remember, somebody could have just one ace here and have aces and fours sure. and have a better two pair. And it checks down, actually. Kyle checks it. And two pair is going to win it here. Jackson nines beats sixes and fours, obviously. Your best five-card hand plays and hold them. So uh, Kyle has Jackson nines with an ace kicker, while David there had sixes and fours with an ace kicker. If you have any questions or comments for us, please email us at live at the bike dot com. Do appreciate the emails. Button is in seat seven now. And uh, seat eight, small blind here. That's Michael. SP surfing on two plus two. He's got ace king. I always say we've seen a lot of like big slicks in the blinds. Yeah, we have. And it's always a tough hand to play out of position. Very so is the question, do you raise it? Anyway. Yeah, I mean, Even no matter position. And does Michaels chop it up? I'm not sure if he chops or not. And he does. He's chopping this up. And we move on. A lovely shot of Angie. <laughs> Angie's a sweetheart. Our favorite food server. I'd like to say she's sweet and, and, and really <laughs> lovely, but, but she's sweet not. she's not. You know, <laughs> she'll get she'll get she'll put her big toe right up your ass. <laughs> but she is very lovely. Yeah. <laughs> kind of reminds me of my Jewish New York mom. You know. Really. She's not. I mean, I don't think she's Jewish, but I mean, just that kind of like demeanor. brash demeanor. Yeah, very honest, brutally honest. Limped around here, four ways, and uh, let's see a flop. Twenty dollars in the pot. Flop is queen eight ace here, rainbow. Kyle and uh, yeah, queen. Kyle's got the best hand. Gonna bet it. David raises it up to 60 with absolutely nothing. Yeah, he's got a gut shot straight throw. I need to jack. It's actually quite a good raise because Kyle doesn't have an ace, so it'd be very easy to hit for him to get away from this. You wonder and I think though. David is still. Yeah, you wonder if David's in that kind of like steam mode where he's going to yeah. try to win every single hand he plays. Yes, I think he is. Hey, have you checked this out at the LA Poker Scene? LA Poker Scene is a new uh, a new poker site. Okay. That you can actually go to if you go to liveatthebike.com on the right hand side, you can go to their banner, and they have this World Series of Poker Bonanza. Okay. Which is crazy. You can win a fifteen thousand dollar package to the World Series. Okay. For five cents. Wow. Five cents. Okay. So uh, click on that. It's literally it's packages ten nights in fabulous Las Vegas, a ten thousand dollar seat at the World Series, one thousand dollars for airfare, and another thousand dollars in mad money. 
you know, for five cents. It's crazy here. That is the crazy. Bonanza is a seven-stage tournament running sit and goes 24 hours a day. You can buy into stage one for just five cents. And if you don't want to deal with stage one, you can option to buy into later stages for a for little more, more money, money, obviously. Sure. So really fabulous. LAPokerScene.com. Click on it. Go to liveatthebike.com. Man, I mean, five cents, you can get 15000 And, hey, you can parlay that five cents into what did, uh, what did uh, Joseph Hoffman win? Seven million. Seven million, hey. Hey, no It's thing. not a bad investment. What's that return <laughs> on that investment? Barry's got pocket five here. Go in the speed limit. It's going to raise it up. You like that song? I can't drive. 55. Remember that song? Yeah, no. No, okay. Nice flop for uh, Barry there, six seven four, and he takes it down with a bet. Another cool LA poker scene uh, um, promo right now. I got to tell you about. Kind of cool, Nicole. Yes. Miss Pepe. Yes. Are you ready to compete for a half million bucks? Yes. Half a million bucks. There's a five hundred thousand dollar guaranteed free roll at the LA poker scene. So okay? is this a, a poker site? A poker internet site. Okay. You play poker. Same as, you know, Poker Stars or Party Poker or any other ones. And it's called LA Poker Scene. LA Poker Scene dot com. Okay. And the exciting thing about it is we're talking about free rolls. All you have to do is sign up with the bonus code 5X500K. Once again, that's 5X500K. New signups get three gold bars, and you get another five gold bars for making a first deposit. Okay. And then you use those gold bars to get into stage one. Yep. And if you win a stage one tournament, you get into the main free roll tournament, which is stage two, which will be held on October 1st. Okay. And first place is 200 grand. Wow. And they're giving away $500,000. Kyle is up against Joseph here. They both have an ace. Yeah, Joseph raised it on the button, a little steal there. And Kyle re raised in the small blind, and he's flop top two pair. And you wonder how he's going to play it here. Now, Joseph's in a tough spot here because he's got an ace, but he's got no kicker. And he's in really, really bad shape. Yeah. I mean, he needs need some sort of runner connecting something. Hmm. And Kyle's going to make a continuation bet, but obviously he's actually got the goods this time. You wonder if maybe Joseph thinks, and Joseph's going to call this bet. Maybe Joseph right. thinks that Kyle is just making a continuation bet with pocket nines oh and pocket tens. No. Oh, well, and Joseph's going to get himself in trouble here. He's hit two pair on the turn, folks. Two pair of the two pair, and Joseph needs an eight and only an eight to win this pot. Wow, and Joseph really hurt. puts the test here. Oh. Now you got to start thinking, what hand does my opponent have? And he's going to move all in. Wow. And, and the only hand you're really scared of here is are you, you put Joseph on jack ten, and the river's a king, and that's not going to change anything. And Kyle is going to double up. And Kyle kind of said, oh, man, I got a call. And you wonder if he was scared of Jack-10 there. Yeah. Um, obviously, a, a definite definite um, possibility. Would have been open-ended on the flop. Eight would have given the, the, the straight. The turn was the absolute worst card. Yeah, the absolute worst card. Well, Bart and I always say, ace rag, you either win a small pot or you lose a big pot. And, yeah, they're just not worth it. And we've seen Joseph actually play a lot smarter than that this whole night. So I think he just had one momentary lapse. So. Yeah. Got himself in trouble by calling that flop. But you can see in No Limit how one little lapse can cost you a lot of money. Yeah, and that was a big pot. I mean, that pot was well over $1,000. Kyle had a lot of money. We'll get another chip count for you as soon as we can. I think about it when I, as I work here, and I'm working and I'm playing poker, and I think, God, every little mistake costs me so much money. It's really you have to go through... Eight hours and not make one mistake, that's the goal. But who does that in life, right? Well, yeah, you, can, you can't beat yourself up when you do make a, mistake, make a mistake, obviously, because they're inevitable. Right. But I do anyways. Well, as long as you... As long Only as you, for a second. Well, yeah, as long as, you can, <laughs> as long as you can learn from that mistake. Exactly. I, I actually keep a little journal where I'll write down my mistakes, and I, I have a motto of, you know, write it down, learn it, let it let go. Let it go. That's right. Nothing worse than somebody getting up and throwing... Chip racks and <laughs> well, it's not, you know, yelling you, at the dealer. It's, it's not going to help you at all. Flop is ace five three here. It's hit nobody except for actually Blue Morgan's Rash. got yeah Morgan's got, got second pair with a gut <laughs> shot. Um, and he's going to check it though. And the turn is a four. He's now got two pair. Anybody with a deuce would have a straight. But would you really put anybody here on a deuce? No, Morgan should bet it here. Well, you know what though? Uh, well, I thought Gus was going to bet it, but Morgan's going to bet it. 
And you notice Morgan's style here. He pretty much, when he bets, he's got it. It's much like my style. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm it's a, lot of, a lot of players do that. You yeah. know, they bet when they've got it. And take it down, Morgan. There's Any advice you have for uh, pl people that might be listening, Kay. especially women that might be listening, that are aspiring poker players, or maybe even want to be professional poker players like yourself? Ah, uh, first of all, I don't call myself a professional poker player. I call this a semi-pros. Really. Okay. <laughs> okay. Being a prop, I don't know if I can really call myself a professional poker player yet. Because you're getting, I'm not, you're getting. I'm getting. Yeah, I'm getting paid. You're but getting stipend you know, by the I'm casino. Not, yeah. Fair enough. Um. Well, uh, any, any any advice for aspiring players that want to really take poker to the next level? You know, I guess the only advice I can give you is you really just have to love the game. And you have to love what you do. You have to, like I said, you have to, like you said even, you have to journal and um, examine every hand. Because really, one we saw one mistake in this game. You let your guard down for one second and you lose all your money. And this is how you're going to make a living. So you can't be losing any money. So it's, yeah. it just takes a lot of thought. It's, it's much harder than... You would think it would be. Well, day in and day out, yeah. Yeah. Grind. Big hands here. We got ace king in seat nine, ace king for Bart in seat five, ace ten suited in seat one. Wow. King queen in seat seven. I mean, we got Broadway all over the place. So basically, all the outs of everybody's hands is gone. Oh, uh, so yeah. pocket deuces in seat two should call here. <laughs> pocket deuces will most likely be the best hand of the flop. I mean, this flop's going to come out like seven, five, six. Uh. And. And the action is on Bart. He is in the blind, and there's a raise. And, and does he want to raise this up? No. Or does he want to just take it? Uh, uh, does he want to take it, you know, five-handed? I think I I might do what Bart's doing here and just call. I I I gotta be honest. I, I agree with you. Yeah. You don't always want to raise the ace king that position because if you get called in a couple of spots or and you miss the flop, then yeah. what do you do? Right. And look at that. The flop comes out queen jack eight, and the hand that was dominated, David, actually flops the best hands. David has a pained look on his face. Now, Joseph actually has a double gutter here. Any nine would give him a straight, and a king would give him a straight. Obviously, there aren't many kings left. <laughs> no. But he doesn't know that. And David's going to bet $90 into a $100 pot. And look, that Joseph just lays it down like it was nothing. It is a two-flush board. There are two diamonds out there, and David's going to take this down. He had the best hand. Yes, he did. Any advice specific for women? I try to think of advice, but rarely does my advice probably. Well, what any kind good. of advice are you giving them? Poker women? advice? No, no, no. Pure, uh, okay. Purely sexual advice. That might be why it's not working out. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Yeah, jeez. Maybe you're right. You know. I should think about that. It's a good question. As being a, a woman here, there's not really that many women. I know. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the way poker has exploded, a lot more women are playing these days. Right. You know, I'm sure some of them would be wondering from you, you know, specific advice you might be able to give them. I will. I will ponder that, and I will get back to you. Ponder away, please. Okay. Maybe not today. Oh, okay. Maybe not tomorrow. But someday. But eventually, yes, I okay. will get back to you. <laughs> well, don't, we'll, we won't hold our breath. <laughs> Pocket eights for seat two, Kyle, and he's going to raise it up, make it $20. And uh, Bart is, is Bart going to call this? He's got nine six of hearts. And you know what? I think he's going to call this because Kyle's got a lot of money, and he's got a lot of money. And for $15, he's got a lot of implied odds, and he's going to call. Now, a hand like this, when you have nine, six of hearts, you almost want your opponent to have pocket aces. So you can really win a big pot. Well, that's not a very good flop for either player. Let's see who takes control of it, though. Michael actually has a best hand here with King Deuce. And uh, Bart lays his hand down. Obviously not a good flop for nine, six of hearts. And Michael's got a backdoor spade draw, plus top pair, not much of a kicker. And he's going to call. Probably doesn't love his hand, but he wants to see where he's at. Turn is a six. Five of hearts, sorry. I would like to see Michael raise here with the top pair to find out where he is yeah, at. And it goes check, check. And look at that. Bart would have made runner, runner, heart flush. <laughs> Man, he's playing too tight. And Michael takes it down with a pair of kings. 
And I gotta tell you, and then the hand of the night so far. And I, I just cannot believe Kyle did not get all of Bart's money. Was that flop? The flop was, everybody missed the hand. The flop was queen 6-6. Six, six. Bart had 6-3. And Kyle had raised free flop, and Kyle had pocket queens. And he raised very small. Right, but I mean. To hide the fact he had pocket queens. So Bart oh. probably, there's no way Bart could put him on pocket But queens. Bart checked the river. I mean, he just, he put Kyle, I mean, he obviously put Kyle on a big hand and lay, and, and just, he really amazing. Something. And when Bart sees this, he will be very proud of himself. Yeah, he smelled it. Well, he saw the queens. And if you can't find the link on our site for 2 plus 2, we do apologize. Just go to 2 plus 2.com or you can email us at live at the our, uh, our actual pro our producer is actually in Vegas partying up. I have, there's a couple names on the 2 plus 2 site for my name. Oh, really? What are they saying? You're One is be? Giggles. Giggles? I like that. That's cute. That's cute. Oh, sweet. Um, another one is uh, QQ Suited. QQs. Okay. Okay. I think those are the only two I've seen so far. Well, maybe somebody can just give you the name. I know they can give you a nickname. I got a nickname of Bart Jr., which I absolutely hate. <laughs> I've been begging somebody to stop that, change it. I mean, I would really rather be anything. I'd rather you call me Manure Head. Manure Head? Right, Ma. Newer. <laughs> Button is in seat six. That's Barry Woods. Action is to Joseph in seat one. He's got one king, we can see. And he's got two kings. And he's going to raise it up. Now, Joseph's really mixed up his game a little bit. You're not quite sure, and he's making it $25 every time. Does he have kings this time, or does he have 10-6? Right. You don't know. I like this. Uh, i got to say, I like the way Joseph has played tonight. But Just got himself. folds to him anyways. Yeah, right? he, and he takes it down. The only hand he got really got himself caught was, you know, he, he hit top pair with a bad kicker, and then he hit his kicker on the turn with an ace-8. It was just a really an unlucky, uh, unlucky hand for him. Right. And I'm getting this 2 plus 2 post from Hey Dog. It says, Hey Tuckman, I signed up on a poker scene, on the, on the LA poker scene site, and he used that code when signing up, and he did not receive anything for the free roll. Do you know why? I gotta be honest, I don't know why. But I will look into it, and the second I know, I will let you know. But be assured you will get those, you will get the gold bars if you have not received them yet. I promise you that. Barry liked his 69, apparently. He's raising it up. Hey, there's a tell. How's this for a tell? If you get a young kid at the table, mm -hmm. and he kind of goes, <laughs> and he giggles, and he goes, I love this hand. It's my favorite hand. Nine out of ten times, he has 69. Or if it's Barry. Oh, like I said, a young kid. <laughs> Same difference. Flop is 9-8-3, and Barry's out flopped, and he's got top pair. Imagine he's going to bet that he's going to bet $60. And David's got nothing. Jeff's got nothing. Barry's going to take this down. Oops. i got to say, after a slow start, Bart might be one of our big winners tonight. Button has moved over to seat eight. Small blind is Jeff. Big blind is Joseph. Good night of poker tonight, I say. Real good night of poker. So I got to tell you about the surround sound system I got. Oh, yes, oh, please. Oh, man. Tell me more. That's, I love to talk about surround sounds. And Isaac wants me to tell everybody about my golf game today. Oh, okay. Surround if sounds and everybody golf. really wants to hear about it, Is you know? Is it my birthday? 
Any girl that loves to hear about my golf game and surround sounds. Sexy, sexy. Yeah, that's not me then. Flop is 9, 8, 8, two diamonds out there. And wow, full house for Kyle. Again, he's got top full house. But seat one is going to bet. And Kyle's, it's a funny thing here. Now, this is an interesting little hand. Kyle actually puts, he puts Joseph's money, Joseph's money in there for him. Okay? And then he calls with his own money. And Kyle checks behind him, and he goes, check, check. And the ter river is a three of clubs. And Joseph's got absolutely nothing. And they check it down. Wow. Yeah, I think that friend thing is coming into play here. Think yeah, but uh, well, the friend thing didn't come into play when he had ace queen and, and, I know. I think and Joseph had ace eight. After that, I think Kyle said, okay, that's enough. <laughs> I won't take any more of your money. I mean, I got I, I to tell you, I, I never understand the friend thing. I, I was playing with a player last night. And we had another player all in, and we were playing against each other. And he goes, hey, do you want to just check it all the way down? I go, no, no, I don't do that. Right. You know, the reason I'm in here is to make money. Right. You know, I don't play that way. Right. And, and as much as I respect you and I, and I like you, Nicole, mm -hmm. if, I'm if I'm in a game with you, I'm going to take your money. No, I agree. I you mean, know. But other people are different ways. Right, yeah. I mean, somebody just said that they would take their grandma's money. I would check raise my grandma. Yeah, I would. On the river. I wouldn't. I have no problem with that. Because you know why? I mean, I don't know. I'm from a kind of an ice hockey mentality right. where you beat the crap out of somebody for 60 yeah. minutes, and then after the game, you buy them a beer, yeah. and you shake their hand. Yeah. Same thing in poker. You know, I have no problem taking Bart's money. I have no problem taking your money. Then afterwards, you go out, and you have a laugh about it. It's over. It's part of the game. But it's your not grandma a is a little different. My grandma, not only would I take her money, I would kick her chair out, too. Yeah, no. Make her fall on her fat ass. I love my grandma. Dude, better than tap Buttons in seat nine. I got stuff going my backyard looks better. Barry raises it up with Doyle Brunson's hand, ten deuce of spades, and he's got a flush draw. And everybody's missed this flop. If it checks to Barry and he bets, he'll probably take it down. Depends on what you guys if I bet, the talking is just in the middle. How much you gonna put in there so I can prepare it? How much you gonna put in there? It's up to you. And there's another king there. I'm really surprised Barry didn't bet the flop. <laughs> Why would he not bet that? And Joseph's now going to bet he thinks his two pair is good. Which it is. I'm really surprised Barry played the hand that way. I mean, if he bets the flop, he takes it down. And now he's put himself in a spot where he's got a draw, and he can't even call. I mean, he's really in a razor fold situation here. I mean, he, you just can't call this here. The pot is not big enough. The implied odds are not there. Right. You cannot call this. And do you want to chase a flush when the board is paired anyway? Right. I mean, it turns out Joseph has the three of spades in his hand, so the three of spades cannot come out, obviously. Um, I just I just don't understand. I mean, this is... Barry really misplayed this hand by not betting the flop. <laughs> no. <laughs> And Barry's going to just call. And is Barry going to use a river card to scare? And look at this. Wow. And the five on the turn, on the river, oh, Joseph's hand is no. complete garbage here. Both players have two pair. But he bets 200. He's, well, he has he to has bet. To. He absolutely has to bet here. And can even Barry call here with 10 high? No, he can't call. It's a great bet by Joseph. He has to bet there. He didn't shut down. Great bet by Joseph. And obviously your best five card hand plays, so Joseph's got kings and fives with an and eight kicker. And he shows it just to... <laughs> and, oh, look at that. Wow. That was a great moment there. He showed it, and then I think he winked at Barry. And then Barry said it was better than my hand. Really, Barry, what did you have? Yeah, what, you could, yeah, you couldn't be... <laughs> Actually, Joseph only played the board. Right. So as long as uh, Barry had anything higher than an eight, he wins the hand. <laughs> And we say it all the time, calling with your draws. Me and, me and Bart are really advocates for raising with your draws and betting your semi-bluffs rather than just calling with them. And you see the way Barry played that hand, and he completely misplayed it and gave away $100 there. If he bets the flop, he takes it down. If he raises the turn, he takes the pot down. And he lets himself get uh, basically bluffed out of the pot. Ace 
king again here for Kyle. Is he two? And is he Lots the big flop raiser? Kings. Lots of ace kings. Michael has king jack. And Lots of kings out there. Three ways. Well, it misses everybody. Morgan has a flush draw. Yeah, Morgan's got a good flush draw, but with a paired board, let's see what happens. And he thought about betting it. He looked at his chips, and then he said check. Well, there it is. He made the flush. And everybody else is drawing dead. Yes. Morgan can only lose the hand if he get if he gets bluffed out. And I don't think anybody can call. Yeah, this. I don't think anyone's even going to call. No. I mean, if Kyle or uh, if Kyle had had the Ace King and the Ace of, Ace of Diamonds, maybe he takes one off, but obviously not. If Gus is again, calling here, I'm thinking he's going to try to take it away from him. And if my dad had, you know, if my mom had balls, she'd be my dad. Okay. If my mom, if my dad had. Apparently, I missed what you said right before that because you lost Yeah, me. I'm mixing it up. <laughs> <laughs> every time I every time I screw up, I just go. On. Well, we've got about 45 minutes left in the show, folks. Hope you're enjoying live at the bike. Live at the bike is Monday through Fridays from 7 to 10 p.m. Pacific time. And Morgan's got a $500 chip there, so he's got over, uh, I want to say, close to $700. Too good a hand for me. I don't say that kind of stuff. Like he won that hand. It wasn't that good. It was like a king three. And look at this. Bart is probably Woo! the big winner of the night, up to 1350 <laughs> Kyle up to 1150 And you can only say that Kyle probably should have fifteen or $1,600 um, when he had a queen's full hand. Morgan probably has close to 650 in his hand, and it, he had that $500 chip there. And a lot of money on the table for, for a three to five game, huh? I mean, you look, at ba look at Barry's stack. Barry won that big straight flush hand right before the show opens, and he's been steadily giving away money since. He is still up, we noticed. Yes, he is still up. Well, I don't know. I mean, if you count the money that he's been giving to Morgan, I'm not sure. <laughs> then, yeah, probably not. You have an ace king again. Oh, but he gave it away, or did he raise it? He raised and nobody called. Okay. Ace king raised 25. No flop. Move on. Bigger and better things. Hey, if you haven't had a chance to vote for the Bluff Magazine uh, poll, you can go to liveatthebike.com mm -hmm. and click on Vote for Bart and Dave, and you can actually, it'll take you to the site. And it's actually uh, bluffmagazine.com slash reader's choice. And there's a poll where you can vote for, you know, best poker room, best online poker room, best Los Angeles, best Vegas, and so forth. You can also vote for best poker show, sure, and vote for best commentating. Oh my gosh! Team. And if you like live at the bike and you like the commentating team, we certainly appreciate you voting for us. Please do. <laughs> and Baron Van Gertoth is talking about manure, saying that it's a. And Baron Van Gertoth, when I say that, he's on the two plus two thread. And uh, he's talking about manure being a refreshing word. I have to agree. I love the word. <laughs> you know, actually, and this is going to be really gross to most of you, but I love the smell of manure. Really? I, I grew up loving horses, so. So you like I, horse manure? I do. I like horse manure. It's different than pig manure, and it's different than cow manure. How about human manure? Yeah, not so much. Okay, I was gonna. I was wondering horse, where you. Were, horse manure. Not I was really wondering where you really were going with this. Human poo manure. I mean, because I call it poo. Because I've heard of some sexual fetishes, and I wasn't sure where you were no, going with that. No, no, no. Ick. Gross. Oh, well, hey, no. okay. You, you said it. I didn't say it. I like horse manure. That's it. That's it. <laughs> and only lightly. Not well, there's a sound, there's a sound bite we will always have. Nicole saying. I like horse manure. <laughs> no, no, not horse manure. You said, I like the smell of manure. <laughs> Pocket I told aces. you you would think it's gross. Pocket aces here for David, and he's going to raise it up. David still has a pained look on his face. He's still yeah. not happy. So let him win this pot and make him happy. Now, the, the original ratio was actually Gus with deuce four. <laughs> and uh, Bart called. Gus keeps trying to mix it up, and he's getting Bart called right in it. And David doesn't even want to get screwed around here. He figures, you know what? I'm not getting any respect at this table. Maybe somebody will call me with, you know, even ace-queen. Because he has that image of kind of people are, you know, he... he 
he has the image that he's making moves a lot. So he figures maybe somebody will think I'm making a move again, and this time I can actually capitalize on it with my I don't think he even cares, actually. Probably not. I think he's just, he's got a hand and he's going for it, yeah. I agree. Did Bart call here? I don't think so. No, nah, it's two hundred dollars to Bart. He's not going to call. He does not have, actually. He probably has enough money. I don't think David has enough money to make this call. Yeah, I mean it's two hundred dollars more. I'm not even sure what Gus is thinking about. He's just wasting our time. You're about to get a call. He just wants him to make to hurt a little bit, maybe. And is Gus in here just to gamble? I mean, is he actually thinking about this, or is he just playing? You know, I, I want to say he's just playing around. I, I don't know what he's doing. I think what happened, maybe what's happening here, is people have seen Gus make a lot of under-the-gun raises and then just throwing them away the minute someone re-raises. Maybe he wants to show that, you know what, guys, I do have some hands sometimes, and I'm going to call you one of these times. But that time he had trash. Yeah, he right. did. But... By taking that long, he you figure maybe like he maybe he had a hand. Maybe he had a real hand there. Yeah. I only do that with I you, though. I can't do that with him. You got cocktails, too? You got oh, there's cocktails. Oh, uh, cocktails. Cocktails all around for the table, as if they're not talking enough. Yeah, David takes it down. I had a four deuce off suit. And Gus is telling him he had a four deuce off suit, so maybe that negates my theory. I think he might have just wanted to gamble. He's friends with David, and he said, you know what? I want to give you a bad beat. <laughs> I don't think David would have minded. <laughs> and uh, Mike here, SP Serpent on 2 plus 2 in seat 8. He's got pocket 7s. Button is in seat 4. You see one 7 is called. Both 7s are actually spoken for, so he has no chance of hitting a 6. I mean, the way I look at it is, I mean, that's the whole thing. I've played it like four times since we walked away from Michael raises it up to twenty. Twenty dollars. And once again Mike is making his bets. His bets are different size bets. And I know Mike actually watches the show. He watches the archives. So he'll hear this. When you're betting 35 with one hand, 50 with another hand, and 20 with a different hand, you're giving away information. Flop is 8-4 deuce, and Gus is out. Flops him here. He only had three outs, and he gets there. It's not a bad flop for sevens, though. I mean, it's only one overcard. And David bet... Actually, Michael bet $50 into about a $60 pot. Imagine Gus is at least going to call this. He might raise. And he just calls. In in position, I mean, to me, I think you have to raise that hand if you're going to play it. Find out where you're at. Well, the, the problem is you, it's a board that, you know, you don't want to, you don't want a diamond to fall off. You don't want a high, you know, Broadway card to come off. You just don't know where you're at. And Michael's going to continue betting. And Michael actually has sevens, by the way. Not ace ten. I think Gus is thinking here that Michael actually might have a bigger pair. An over pair? Yes. The problem is, though, is he only bet $20 pre-flop. And he showed Gus actually the eight. I mean, Gus showed Michael the eight. And Michael earns himself a pot there. And Michael, did Michael yeah. say eights are good? Is that what he said there? Yeah. He, I, I think, I'm not sure what exactly he said. Um, but if Gus makes a little raise there on the flop, he gets the information and he probably wins the pot. I mean, I have no problem laying the hand down. But if you're always going to lay down top pair to a bet, Obviously, you know, people can take advantage of that. <laughs> we get an email here from Mark Bonagara. I'm butchering that guy's poor name. I'm sorry. Uh, he says, yay for Bart. Hmm. 
You think Bart will tip us? Yeah, no. We've got a raise from Gus again. C3 with 10-9. No, ace-10, excuse me. C2 calls with 10-9. Bob, seven, six, deuce, a couple of spades. Everybody misses here. Kyle's got an op uh, a gut shot straight draw. Gus has got absolutely nothing, but that's not going to stop him from betting. He does have the best hand right now. He does have the best hand, yes. Kyle's going to throw it away. <laughs> Gus th thinks he's showing down a bluff, but he actually has the best hand. Tomorrow night you can catch us at our big game tomorrow night. It's a 25-50 blind, no limit hold'em game. Minimum buy-in is yeah, minimum buy-in is three thousand dollars, no maximum, and that game plays really big. There will pr probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of sixty to seventy grand on the table. And then Thursday's obviously another no limit game. And then Friday will be our big 10 20 no limit game. And next Monday, we promise we'll probably have a limit game back on. Unfortunately, like I said, our producer is out of town, and we could not get the limit game down. Once in a while, those limit players are a pain in the neck. Yeah. And Bard has raised it up in the cutoff seat with Jack 10. And he hits the top pair. And he hits top pair. Now, I, I think he was raising it up to buy himself the button. The problem is with Barry behind him, he's never going to buy himself the button. <laughs> Barry's always going to call. There are some players, if it's a tight player behind me, I will almost always raise it to the cutoff seat, knowing I can get the button. Right. But in this case, Barry's, Bart's actually not in a great spot. He's got to think he's pretty good here with this kind yeah. of flop. Well, the pot's about $80. He bets 50 into it, a little bit more than half the pot. He's got top pair. David thinking of calling here with his pocket deuces. David would be good if he catches one of his two outs. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't we all? I mean, the value of these hands are generally hit a set or get out. Right. Generally. Now, Especially once in a while. Deuces. Even with deuces, you get set over set often. Yeah, once in a while. You can, you know, you can really put the other player on a particular hand, especially heads up, and you can call him down with a low pocket pair if you've got a good read on the guy. But four-handed, why, I mean, and, and look at this, and Bart has made two pair. Um, David, if he had a straight draw, would have gotten there. And, and look at this. David is going to represent 8-9. He's representing an open and a straight draw, and he's betting the 10 as if it made him the straight. Yeah, but that made Bart two pair. And Bart's got to figure out, does this guy have two? Is he bluffing? Does he have eight, nine? Or maybe did that make him two pair? I mean, David's got absolutely nothing here. I mean, deuces, but that's pretty much nothing, isn't it? <laughs> pretty much everything beats deuces. <laughs> and you got to wonder now, if the guy hit his, if the 10 made him a straight... Would he bet right into you, or would he check raise? No, I'm always leery of people that bet into you. When they didn't raise you on the flop, but then they bet into you on the turn, I feel like 75% of the time they have nothing. Okay, and Bart just calls. Well, you kind of wonder. You go, wait a second. The 10 made him. Why wouldn't he check raise? And the river's a 3, almost a 2, but not a 2. Now David's thinking, oh, my God, I have to go all in here if I want to win this pot. And if I check, I definitely win. This is the question. If now David what? moves all in, now he checks. And does Bart put a little value bet in here? Uh, at this I mean, point, I think you have Bart, to. I, ju I just turn it over. How can you turn this over? Well, what, the guy's going to get? Is the guy going to call? He no. might. He might. He, he might have had ten six. No. I don't know what he has. He, and he just turns it over. How? Okay. What if the guy checked? With okay. His, with his eight nine. If he checks with his eight nine. Bet makes a value bet. Bart makes a value bet. And okay. Then so be it. So me, but I don't put the guy in 8-9 because he didn't check-raise the turn. Yeah. I don't think he bets his 8-9 right into me. I think it's more likely that he's either on a stone-cold bluff right. or the 10 might have made him some sort of odd two-pair, like 10-7. And right. he took one off, and the 10 made him two-pair, and you have two-pair against two-pair. Right. 
And then when you when Bart called the hundred, it kind of scared him a little bit, and he was ready to check it down also. Right. And in that case, why not throw a little value bet? You might get paid off a couple hundred dollars. I mean, you got to add up all those times, all those value bets that you miss. Mm -hmm. Hundred here, hundred here, two hundred here, three hundred here, fifty there. And then the, I mean, how many times are you really going to get check raised on the river? Yeah. I mean, how, how long have you been here with the bike? Probably seven months. How many times have you been check raised on the river? Uh, well, I only play limit. So it's okay, how many different. times? A few. A few, yeah, like yeah. what, six? Maybe. So like one time a month maybe? Maybe, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't, it doesn't equal out. You know, the amount of value bets you lose right. Right. to the amount of times that you get check raised, okay. Like in that case, okay, Bart throws in a nice $200 bet into, say, a $300 pot, and he gets check raised all in. Okay, he's probably forced to call. Right. But then you can always reevaluate your hand. You can also go, wait, would this player check raise me on the river without the nuts? Right. Bart can then throw it away right. if he wants to. You're not forced to call that r that raise. I don't know. I just see a lot of value bets that are missed, and I think that was screaming one. I mean, Bart's going to argue with me that, hey, look, I didn't value bet the six three. Right. I think. I mean, like like I told you before, I think for me, value betting is lost a lot on me. I mean, by the time I get down to the last card, the pot is usually. I, I feel like I've done all the work. The pot is big enough. I'm willing to take it down right there. I'm not willing to risk anymore. I'm ready for it to be done. Right. That's just my theory. That's my I understand. on it. I mean, you do understand. Now, a lot of these players, I'm not going to give a lot of these players credit that they're paying attention to you mm -hmm. or any particular person. I mean, they're paying attention to you in terms of, mm -hmm. you know, you're a girl, you're good looking, you're playing. But are they going to pay attention to you in terms of your playing and how you're playing? Right. But if, if, a, if a good player is playing against you and starts picking up on the fact that you only bet your absolute monsters right. or your bluffs, aren't you giving away something then? Yeah. Okay. I think everything we do, if people are actually paying attention, everything we do gives away things. But the problem is most time people just aren't paying attention. It's limped around. We've got ace, jack, and seat... Nine with Jeff it looks to be their best hand. I gotta say I'm really impressed with Joseph's game tonight. And that's Chester on two plus two. He's really mixed up his game a little bit. Kind of come out a little bit out of the box, and he's played really well tonight. And uh, Baron, I did get the reference. Just didn't feel like going into the entire thing. But thank About you. And Seinfeld manure. Yeah. Manure. <laughs> hey, that's a really nice watch you got there. Yeah, I don't get that reference. No. <laughs> Michael here with Queen Eight, top pair. He's going to bet it. And. Uh, Pretty straightforward fold here for Ace Jack. I mean, he's open ended with one card to come, two diamonds out there, and he plays down. I mean, it's kind of a razor fold situation once again. If you think your opponent's somewhat weak, hey, raise it up with your draw. The worst thing that'll happen is you get called, you still have outs. Worst thing that can happen is you get re-raised and you can still hold. Yeah, but that's how. find out where you're at. Obviously, raising in no limit. Some people always point that out to me, and it is a definite, definite drawback. Raising with your draws, especially if you have a good draw and no limit hold them. If you raise and you get re-raised, sometimes you're forced to lay the hand down if it's a big enough bet. Right. Well, you know what I always thought um, until I watched this last week. I always thought, oh, I never want to raise with my draw. But what I noticed last week a couple times that somebody raised with their draw, and they actually, the person who had originally bet had maybe second pair, maybe bottom pair, and got them to lay down the hand right then and there because they didn't have maybe an ace as they were stating they were, um, that they had with their bet. So it's actually, I mean, I learned a lot that way, that right. the raise on a draw isn't, you know, you're not doing that to get everybody out of the pot. Um, you're just doing that basically because you have a good draw, and maybe you can take the pot down right then. Yeah. Bart's coming out of the box a little here. He's raised it up with seven three of spades in middle position, and he gets called in two spots. How does he like his hand now? And <laughs> the pot is actually called in three spots. Flop is ace, six, deuce. This may be good for uh, Bart. He can 
Yeah, he can possibly represent the ace. The problem with it is Kyle actually has an ace. And he's going to represent he has it in front of Bart. And yeah. Bart quickly throws away. <laughs> That's an easy lay down there. Now, two diamonds here, and David has the nut flush draw with the king eight of diamonds. Barry has second pair. He's going to lay that down, and I imagine David is going to call. Sometimes I raised here, even. It kind of puts you in a good spot. If you raise this and your opponent is not real strong, mm -hmm. they will often check to you. They might call, they might fold, but they might just check to you on the turn, you and you can take card. the free card if you want. Absolutely. You can reevaluate your hand there. Looks like David is going to raise. I mean, your point is, is, is so well said. Oftentimes when somebody bets, we yeah, always give them calling. credit for, we always give them credit for, oh, they must have a good hand. And right. they don't necessarily. I mean, this guy's only got ace eight. Exactly. I think that often. I think, I mean, I automatically, when someone bets, I automatically put them on top pair. Or, you know, you got to get out of that mentality. Yeah. A lot of times people are betting with, with second pair. Right. Or third pair. Or a draw. And, and, by, and by just calling, you put yourself in a spot here where you're just calling off your money. Indeed. And are there any implied odds? Because the diamond draw is pretty obvious. If a diamond hits, is he, hits, is he going to get paid off? And he went all the way for nothing. Yeah. And this is not a bad check. I don't mind this check at all. You know, you got to figure, okay, if, first of all, if the guy had diamonds... I want to give him a chance to bluff, so I'm going right. to induce a bluff here. Right. And if he had an ace, you know what? I only have an eight kicker. He might have me out kicked. Right. But you're, you're certainly checking with the intention of to calling call any bet. Yes. I do that often limit. Yeah. And this check is one of those cases where it's, a clear, it's an easy check. Yeah. Yeah, and David's going to check it down. Kyle's going to take it down. Well played by Kyle. And we were talking about the value of calling. We said in limit holding, you can also off, often call with your draws because somebody can't bet you off that draw. The mm -hmm. pot is laying you enough odds. There's enough money in the pot to call it. Now, in no limit holding, though, mm -hmm. since you can bet any amount, there's often not enough money in the pot. So you have to count on implied odds. So for me to go for a draw in no limit holding, I really want my draw to be well hidden which is why I often will go for double gutters, double gut straight draws. Mm -hmm. I will even sometimes go for inside or gut straight draws, you know, straight draws. Um, I might go for an open-ended that's not obvious. But flush draws, everybody always sees the flush draw. I mean, you can play poker one day, and you go, oh, there's two diamonds out there. The guy must have diamonds. Right, especially if he's just calling you all the way. Ex they just immediately assume, this guy must have diamonds. Right. Um, and it's, it's, it's never hidden. And because of that, there aren't that many, there's not that much implied odds in there, you know. So and that's, I'm wondering if it's really worth a call, going right. for those. Barry raises it to 30 with pocket queens. Wow, Barry's got a real hand. Michael calls with 9, 10 of hearts. Kyle calls with queen, 9 of spades. And that might just price Gus in there. With king four, nope, not gonna do it. Eight six six, couple of clubs out there. Barry's still well in the lead here. Michael's got a gut shot straight draw, but without a club in his hand, it's a pretty easy lay down. And. Everybody else lays it down, <laughs> and Barry takes it down. Got about a half hour left in the show tonight. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at liveatthebike.com. We do read them. Get an email here from Paul, Paul Ferdiani calling, wash your hands. He says, Dave, please do the players who play at the bike, of, he says, tell the players who play at the bike to wash their hands when they leave the bathroom. Okay. Wash your hands. I'll tell everybody. Okay. I wash my hands. I try to. <laughs> Big fan of washing my hands. He also says you guys do a great job and I watch every night. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much for your email, Paul. I will pass on the good word. You know, I'm not a big hand washer at home, but at, when I'm at the bike, I wash my hands probably 
20 times a day. Wow, set of aces here for Kyle. Wow. And Joseph has got an ace here. Oh, oh man. Oh, boy, the friends are headed. <laughs> oh, again. my gosh. And Joseph is drawing almost dead. He needs some sort of runner runner possibility here. Poor Joseph and Kyle. Now, this is the reason why I'd never want to play soft versus my friends. You never know when your big hands are going to come out. Right. And, you know, you don't really want to play it soft against somebody. And, and you know what? Kyle's not going to play it soft. He's going to raise him right away. Yep. He's going to let him know where he's at. He's going to tell you, get out of my pot. You're losing. I mean, in some ways, you might say that he's actually playing it. He's actually he being is. nice by letting him I know where he he's is. at. Yes. He's saying, I've got this. Hold it. I've got it. Get away. You're beaten. Yeah, Joseph's in bad shape. He needs runner, runner, something. He needs a lot of help. Yeah. I don't think he can get runner, runner, anything to help him right now. Ten, queen is about it, huh? Yeah. Ten queen, seven ten. He's drawing slim and none. And he's going to throw it away. Is he going to show? He's, Kyle? Definitely, he's definitely going to show. And, and Joseph lays it down. And that's the part of the game that Joseph's got. Uh, Joseph has like a really good lay down there. Ace jack, just a jack kicker. There's not much you can beat there. Throw it away. Yeah. Take a shot at it and get rid of it. Once again, if you have any private messages or questions for Bart or I, or Nicole soon, Nicole, you can go to 2plus2.com <laughs> and send us a private message. My name well, on 2plus2. Like like two two. private message. Yeah, yeah. What are they private. saying in their messages? Hey, it's private. Oh. But my name is Friar Tuck. I'm intrigued. And Bart is Bart Hansen. And Nicole has yet to uh, fill one out, but she I will soon. I don't know what my name should be. Eventually, I shall do it. Here she is. Button is in seat three. Got a whole bunch of nothing. We got an ace king in seat one. Yeah, and I'm sure I'm sure Joseph's gonna raise this up. He's in late position. Sure. Two before the button. Makes it twenty-five dollars to go. Probably everyone's gonna lay this down. Yeah, and everybody does. We haven't heard anything from Morgan in a while. No, Morgan's been real quiet. You know, he had uh, the unfortunate, uh, unfortunately got his kings yeah. ran into Bart's aces. That will make anyone quiet. Yeah, just bad luck there. our last and final chip count in a few minutes. Five players. We've got five players to the flop here. Flop is ace, ten, four, a couple of spades. 20. Doesn't really hit anybody. A couple of players. I want to say Bart has a straight draw. Yeah, and Bart's got king queen. But he's not in the hand, supposedly. Okay. So, uh, and, and either way, Gus is actually going to bet with deuce three. He had a wheel draw and takes it down. Question here from KK Sudan. Is Nicole a prop at the bike? Yes, I am. So if you like Nicole, you can come down to the bike <laughs> and see her five days a week. Even if you don't like me, you can. Yeah. If you like her, you can say <laughs> hi. If you don't like her, you can try to win her money. <laughs> pocket pocket king for Michael there, SP Serpin. I mean, it's interesting. The people on 2 Plus 2 are arguing the merits of making a value bet on the river and no limit hold them. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Bart and I have been arguing that for the last six or seven months. Um, 
I guess they each their own, you know. It is. It really is. It's a, it's a way. I mean, you can argue theory and you can argue the way you should play forever, but everyone has their own style and you got to do what you feel is right. Kyle here with bottom pair. Michael's got an over pair. Flop is jack, five deuce. And Michael's going to bet this and take it down. Pretty straightforward there. You know, it's interesting. A lot of a lot of tournament professionals talk about, you know, you'll read a book on, like, by Gus Hansen, or you'll read a book by Phil Helmuth, or somebody like that, or even Doyle Brunson, Super System. And I don't think anybody can emulate completely somebody else's style. I think the best way to learn how to play poker is really to read all these books, take little ideas from everybody's play, take ideas from the people you play with, and then kind of formulate your own game plan, your own, because it's really got to fit with your own personality and the own way you play. Absolutely. I mean, for me, I mean, I, I really, I mean, I've read so many different books in terms of Doyle Brunson and, and, and Barry Greenstein's book, and I've really learned probably a little bit from every single book. Mm -hmm. And I've also re obviously learned a lot by watching the archives and watching Live at the Bike. Right. And between all that, I've got my style of play. Right. Barry raises it up to 30 on the button with queen, 10 of hearts. Yeah, I think that's what you have to do, David. I think you're not going to become a great player just by doing what everyone else does. It's no. just by... I mean, I read them just to find out how, what they think about when, when they're playing, well, how they do certain things they do, but you've really, you've got to play the game. The only way you're really going to learn is by what? playing it. Reading a book isn't going to do it for you. I mean, you can watch somebody like Gus Hansen, and you can go, man, I play like Gus Hansen, but it doesn't work for me. Well, you know, I mean, Gus Hansen might have that sixth sense where he's really good at reading other players, and if you don't have that, or you don't think you can develop it, well, maybe you, you, you tone it down and you mix in Gus Hansen's play once in a while, right. you know, once every 10 hours or so, or you pick a spot, and you mix that in with somebody else. Right. You know, maybe if that style doesn't work for you, Daniel Negrano style doesn't work for you, you got to make, you know, Nicole Pepe style. you got to make my own style. That's right. $25 raise here from uh, Joseph here, and he's got garbage. He's got six deuce of clubs. He's mixing it up. Yes, he is. And uh, I'm not sure if anybody's going to call this. Barry's got ace rag. He's got ace deuce. No, I'm not going to get involved. Have you noticed a lot of times when players mix it up, they seem to raise under the gun? Yeah. Why is that? Well, I mean, the only thing I can say is you see that raise there. You certainly get a lot of respect by raising under the gun. Yeah. I mean, i, I got to tell you, if I'm playing in a game and Joseph raises under the gun, I put him on a minimum of ace queen, ace king, or, like, you know, nines or above. Yeah. Raising under the gun is a pretty powerful play. I mean, I actually see people in tournaments do it that are well respected mm -hmm. because they know other players think that they won't do it unless they have a big hand. Right. You know, sometimes actually in a tournament, the worst place to steal blinds and antes is the button because people are expecting you to steal there. Right. I know. That's why, you know what, half the time I never raise on the button if I don't have anything. Honestly, I know that sounds bad. You're supposed to every time, but... I feel like half the time that I would have, um, the blinds would have woken up with a hand, or I would have lost money, or I feel like that play is just so overused now. Ace King again, C3 for Gus. I mean, in the end, the blinds don't even need a real hand. If they sense your weakness, if they right. think that you're on a button steal, right. they can re-raise you with anything. And take it down. Which is, yeah, why that play, it just seems to me like it's just very overused. And now I think it's almost like a novel play wow. to not raise on the button. He threw away nines. Wow. Michael threw away nines on the button to Gus's raise. And how much did Gus raise? Okay, okay. It was a big raise. I see. I guess he just Somewhat won. surprising. I mean, nines to the button. But I guess with a $100 raise, why do you want to really take that heads up? Right. Um, I mean, sometimes I actually really like raising... Sometimes I actually won't raise much on the button. I'll almost raise like a mini raise on the button in the tournament as well. But I'll do it only if I think the big blind or the small blind is somewhat of a weak player. Mm -hmm. Because what I want them to do is I actually want them to call. And we got a chip count here. I'll get to it in a second. Uh, Kyle in the lead with 1,500. He's the big winner for the night. Bart in second place with 1,400. Bringing up the rear is David. He's in there for another buy-in as well. Um, you can see the rest of it there. Um, what the heck was I saying? What was I saying? You're talking about raising a small amount on the bottom oh, right. of the tournament. 
if I think the big blind and the small blind is a weak player, mm -hmm. I will often raise, maybe, let's say the blinds are 5,100, maybe I'll raise it up to 225, mm -hmm. almost enticing a call. And when they call me, if they miss the flop, they'll more often than not check to me. I can put in a pot size bet and take it down. Right. And not only am I stealing the blinds, but I'm actually stealing a little bit extra. Right. $65 bet here. Pocket eights by Gus. Actually, he's got eight seven. Oh. <laughs> you forgot. Yeah. Does he? Yeah. Eight seven, second pair. Eight seven off suit here. Yeah, second pair. And uh, now seat one, Joseph's got a queen jack, and he is going to call. Just call. And the turn is a five of hearts. That changes nothing. Interesting. How do you play this with Gus now? If you if if you're Joseph and you check it to him, you might be giving him a free card. <laughs> Gus basically checked. Joseph reached for his chips and Gus folded. Quickly. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's what happened. I was gonna say you don't really want to check that just in case Gus is on a draw like nine ten or clubs. So we got a bunch of nickname possibilities for you. We've got horse manure. <laughs> I don't like that one. We've got Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> no, it's Pepe Le Pew. Pepe Le Pew, sorry. <laughs> so that would be somewhat funny. <laughs> Pepe Le Pew. That's cute. Yeah, get us into a boxing match or something. Button is in seat one. That's Joseph. 25. Are you going to play ultimate bet or something like that? No. Bart should be back tomorrow night, unless he wants to take a shot in the 25-50 game. Yeah. I would like to see that, but um, I would advise against it. That's crazy up there. Yeah, they're giving money away. Everybody gives money right here at the Bicycle Casino. We are in Bell Gardens, California, about 10 miles south of Los Angeles. If you want some money, just come on down. We give it away here. Eastern Avenue. Now, we got kicker problems here for Barry. Ace 10 versus Ace 9. Kyle against Barry. Barry does have backdoor spade draw. And Kyle's going to bet $75 in house. How is Barry going to play this with Ace-9? Oh, yeah. And he's going to raise, it looks like. Wow. And he is. And you know, you wonder if Kyle's going to get away from his hand here. He only has Ace-10. It's not like he's got a great kicker either. You know, what hand can Kyle beat here? He can only beat really a weaker Ace. Or sure. maybe if Barry's on a spade draw. Right. It's always good to raise. I like Barry's play. I have a feeling if Kyle went all in here, Barry would throw it away. <laughs> do you think? Well, he, he found out yeah, the information he, he wanted to know. Yeah, he might call this bet, and then if Barry bets 500 on the turn, yeah. it's certainly a tough call for Ace-10. Um, but I like to play by Barry. I mean, I always say raising is better than calling. Absolutely. And this just proves it right here. Yeah. Kyle's actually winning. Yeah, and even but it's hard to call with one pair. Not a, not a fantastic kicker. Even if Barry doesn't continue firing, let's say Kyle were to call this hand, there is an advantage to raising here. Because Barry, maybe he's not comfortable with his kicker either. And he can choose to check it down. Kyle would all likely he'd check the whole way. Kyle would probably check the turn. Barry would check behind him. And I doubt Kyle would have the goal to actually check the river. While if, uh, if Barry just smooth calls, Kyle might continue betting $100 and 150 and away. look at that. Kyle throws it away. Nice bet by Barry. He earns himself a pot. And that's how you do it. I gotta tell my remind myself of that more often when I'm in pause. <laughs> I'm learning, I'm learning. Now I know you play a lot of green chip limit holder. I do. I'm a green chip prop. Which so is where and obviously six, raising 12, is not eight, 16, yeah. Raising is not quite as, as powerful in that movie. No, no. And limit, limit's a very different game. You know, you, you play what you got. There's not a lot of bluffing because, I mean, the odds are people are going to call you anyways. Especially at those levels. Yeah, you raise to get more money in the pot when you have the nuts. Sometimes that changes by the river, but you do what you got to do. <laughs> Button has moved over to seat two. That's Kyle. Uh, Bart is not going to play the hand. I think Bart won his money and he's done for the night. Yeah, Bart, Bart's checked out. I think it's hard to break into the online book. Yeah, yeah. Five players. Flop is Jack 995, five way action. Pocket eights are no longer good here because seat three, Gus, has got Jack Deuce. 
Yeah, a bunch must, of. We're spending millions of dollars. Like there's like caca. There's like yeah. A, you know, <laughs> carpet. Like Gus will take it down with Jack like, Deuce. Like a carpet with like paparazzi. Just goes to show if you have anything, Rays. Never let the blind see it for free. British like sports betting site. They're huge. They're sports book journalists. Right. Right. They're oftentimes like in that case there. You know, Gus has got Jack with a deuce kicker. Can he really take any heat? You know, if somebody raises him or calls and then raises the turn, there's no way he can call because he can't beat a nine. The board's Jack nine nine, and he can't beat any Jack really. Right. Yeah. Fifteen minutes left in this show. Yeah. Gotta tell you, it's been really enjoyable. Can you play poker for me as well. No. Nice breakup for you to get into the booth instead of uh, playing for a second, huh? Yeah, you know, I love to play, but it is nice. That's a great <laughs> post. Russ McGinley on 2 Plus 2 has said, <laughs> Does anyone else get aroused when Nicole says button? Say can, can you say it? I say button. <laughs> say it again just for everybody at home. No, Come on, one more time. No, button. <laughs> well, the... Uh, That's how you say it, right? The... Uh, the... The button. Is in seat four. Okay. That's for you, Russ. <laughs> How do you say it? Oh, like Button? Else, uh, Nothing. <laughs> let's, be, let's be honest. Everything will be more arousing to these guys on 2 plus 2 <laughs> coming out of your mouth. <laughs> that would make sense, yes. And I'm glad. <laughs> Gus is going to make it $20 with 5-4 in the cutoff seat. <laughs> and Bart calls with threes. And Barry's going to range with the ace queen in the big blind. <laughs> and you know what? Barry is deep enough, and Bart is deep enough. I call if I'm Barry. I mean, I call if I'm Bart. Just because it's you, Barry. I might even call because I'm Gus. Only reason I'm making this. I appreciate that. No, Gus is saying he's only calling because it's for Barry. Yeah, and Bart's going to call too, and this pot is quickly a hundred dollars. Gus actually, I mean, Bart actually has the best hand. Not anymore. No, Barry slop top pair, top kicker. But once again, you know, ace queen. We talk about the limitations in that hand also. You're basically going to win a big hand. You're going to win, I'm sorry, win a small pot or lose a big one. You know, the only way Bart's going to give you any action here is the flop comes out queen 9-3. Right. And obviously that's action you don't want if you have ace queen. Now obviously Barry is good enough that he can also represent, let's say a king had come out, a queen had come out, a jack had come out, or an ace comes out, he can probably take that hand down. Yeah, he would have with the players that were in there with him, definitely. Yeah. What they had in their hands. That's sometimes the value also. Sometimes if I call, if I'm call, if I have a draw, and I'm calling somebody or I'm raising somebody, I will often think of other cards that might be scare cards. For the other person, you mean? Exactly. You know, let's say a nine or a six give me a straight. Okay, but let's say that I can also pretend that if a club comes, mm -hmm. I've got the flush, 25. or if an ace comes out, maybe that'll scare him too, and so forth. Barry's got ace king. I've seen that many, many times tonight. Now, seat three's got Gus has got a real hand. He's got pocket eights. Raise. Joe raised pre flop with what is it queen and nine or king Barry's going to raise him again here, and he makes it seventy five. It's fifty more now. And you just wonder, because Barry raises almost every other hand, how can you possibly respect it? And the pot is uh, heads up, $175. 10-10-7, that's not a bad flop at all for eights. Barry and Gus, they've been nemesis is. Yeah, Gus moves, it before. <laughs> Gus moves all in. I just don't understand the play by Gus, though. If you think your hand is the best hand... I think he thinks if you bet smaller than that, Gary Barry will probably call with anything, which he probably will. What's wrong with that? Well, I mean, do you right want now him you're to catch an ace or a king? Well, I mean, if, you're, if I'm a big favorite, I don't mind if he calls. Yeah. I mean, he's only got six outs. Yeah. If he hasn't hit his hands. And look, he's going to call anyway. He's going to call anyway. This is, Gus knew this. <laughs> Maybe that's why. I mean, to me, though, in this case, if I have eights, what I was going to say, and Barry's completely made me look like an idiot again, <laughs> was you're only going to get called by a hand that beats you. 
but <laughs> Barry's proven me wrong as he calls him down with ace-king. And Barry's going to make Gus sweat it a little bit, not show his hand for a little while, not muck it for a little while. And Gus is going to take down what amounts to about a $600 pot. I mean, you understand what I'm saying, though. Mm -hmm. If you bet that much with pocket eights into a flop of 10, 10, 7, what's going to call you? Well, I think at that point he's thinking, all right, the pot's already, like, what'd you say, 175? Yeah. 175? I mean, that's what I'm thinking. So 175, I'm ahead right now. Let me take yeah. the pot. Let him take that Give hand. it to me. Don't let him catch anything. You know how often people take it on the river. Or yeah. I, I mean, I, I got to say, Gus made a good play. I mean, he knows Barry Woods apparently better than I do. I mean, well, I've seen these Barry two play seem play. to have some history, definitely. I mean, I've seen Barry Woods play hours upon hours, but I didn't think Barry would make that call, but I was wrong. Nice play by Gus. Aces for Morgan. Let's see if he can get a secret revenge yeah. on somebody. <laughs> now, Morgan has had aces twice today and kings once, and he has lost with his aces and his kings. Those tips must have come from Barry. They're all sticky. Poor guy. <laughs> Raise it up a lot. <laughs> Just so you can say you won with your Raise aces. 50. Now he makes it $50. That's a real bet there. That's a real bet. No one's going to call. I don't Anybody think so. Unless, does Joseph want to call fives? No, he doesn't. And... There you go. And he shows the aces. Woo. Well, I guess better win a small pot than lose a big one, huh? After you've lost with him already, just let me win, please. You saw Memoirs of I liked it. I mean, the movie itself is Button moves over to seat seven. It was no bad Santa. You made out during Santa? No, Bad Santa? No, I didn't read that one. Oh, oh, Made the mistake of going and seeing the new world. I said, they had a book on bad Santa? Getting an email here from Cuban45. Um says, tell Morgan that Raleigh is going to tell him he sucks. Okay. Get another one here. Wow. Cuban 45 over uh, there. He said, also, he called Morgan a bitch. Wow. Some harsh words. He said he wanted to see you again. I said, who are you going to root for? Wow. Anybody's on the side of the two. He's some homeless black guy. I'm on his side. Gus with queens, Morgan with ace jack, Bart with eights, wow, and Kyle with king jack diamonds. We got a big pot yeah, brewing here. Yeah, this is a nice pot. We have fifty dollars times four. We got a two hundred dollar pot to the flop, folks. Flop is king ten five, and Kyle now Aye, has the best hand. Yeah, yeah he's out flopped them all. He's out flopped Gus. Well, and Kyle's not messing around. I mean, he just immediately bets. I mean, he, no no point in check raising. Yep. No need to disguise your hand. He's just going to bet it. And Gus looks like he's smartly going to get away from it. Yeah. It's very hard to lay down those queens, those jacks. Yeah, you, you know what, though? When good you, job, Gus. When you raise with queens, yeah. you get called in three spots and a king flops, and somebody bets into you. You're yeah. dead. But yeah, there's a, there's a little clue there. And uh, Morgan's got each jack of hearts. He's got backdoor heart draw and a gut shot straight draw. But he needs a queen, and there's only two left. I mean, he's drawing really slim here. Uh, obviously, an ace would also do it for him. Grab a cam. Nine. And the turn would have been a nine. Not changing anything. River looks like maybe an eight. Is that an eight of space? It's a good guess. Get another email here from R.T. Hickman. It says, good show tonight. Great evening tonight. Voted at Bluff last week for you guys. Can I vote again? Sure. Um, you know what? The only way you can vote again is oh, if you sorry. vote, actually, <laughs> with a different email address. So if you have more than one email address, you can vote again. Um, uh, and says, a question for you, actually, was, Nicole, yes. how did you start playing poker? I actually started a couple years ago, and I started watching uh, the Travel Channel's, what's it called? World Poker Tour. There you go. That's right. And I had a roommate that got me hooked on that, and then I started coming to the bike and played 2-4 last two Januarys ago, and here I am today, all the way in the 6-12. Well, there you go. <laughs> hey, you got to start somewhere. I started playing 3-6, uh -huh. then moved to 4-8, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. Right. you got to start somewhere. Right. You know, don't knock it. Seat 6 is a razor. That's Barry Woods. He's got jack-8 hearts. 
Get a couple of callers so far, and the action is to seat nine, and he's going to call. And you wonder if Joseph's going to throw some money in there now with Queen Jack. You imagine he's going to, and, and he's going to call too. Wow, we are seeing multi-way action here. Wow, folks. we're going out with a bank. Yeah, we got seven-way action times $25, $175 pop to the flop, ace, ten, seven, two spades. Gus has got a monster flop here. He's got a pair with a spade draw. Michael and Jeff both have an ace. Yeah, both have aces here. And I'm looking for any other draw here. Now, Barry's got a gut shot straight draw with the heart backdoor hearts, and that's pretty much it. And Gus is going to bet $65 with his spade draw and a pair of 10s. And uh, Barry's, is Barry going to call this? I think wow, so. Wow, Barry's raising. Nope, he's going to raise. How do you raise? Now, I'm all for raising. you got six players behind you, though, Barry. Well, he's trying to tell them who's boss, I yeah, guess. Come on, though. you got six callers, and there's an ace-10 out there. you got to think somebody's got something, don't they? Not to mention it's Gus, so Gus is just going to go all in on it. Yeah, him. but what's Jeff going to do now? <laughs> Jeff's got ace-jack. Man, this, is, this, this could get big, folks, because if Jeff makes a move, you wonder if Gus's hand is big enough here to just move all in, and I think it is. I think he's going to. I mean, he's got a pair. He's got second pair with a flush draw. He's got to figure, okay, I've got nine spade outs. If I hit a ten, I'm probably good. And if I hit a four, I've got two pair, and that might be good. You know, if you add up those outs, he's actually got 14 outs. You know, he's actually a favorite to win this hand right now, Gus, right. over Jeff. Jeff. Jeff is a very tight player. I can see him laying this down. problem is it's Barry raising. Does Barry have any respect at this table? I mean, Barry's been raising left and right. But he hasn't had to show down. Good point. Good point. Obviously, we're privy to what he has. The right. table is not. Morgan, a.k.a. Mr. Peepers, yeah. is not in the hand. <laughs> he was. He folded. And look at that. Wow. Jeff throws away ace-jack. Yeah. The best hand. Ace-five also laid it down. That was Michael. Barry gets two people with aces to lay them down. And now it's back to Gus. And I got to imagine Gus is going to move all in here. I mean, I would. It's the beauty of the raise. Wow, and look at that. I mean, you'd think, well, you can't raise here, Barry. But sure enough, he's gotten two people with the best hand out. Lay it down. Problem is, all he's done is protect Gus's hand. Gus has got a 10. But is Gus going to be able to push here? Yeah, you wonder. Once again, Barry's got backdoor heart draw. He needs a 9 for a straight. And in this case, actually, a jack would give him the win as well. And if, if it, spade does not come in hey, spades. Uh, well, and there's the spade. And he just says all in right away. He's very confident. Barry's got to know he's got it. Plus, Barry's got nothing. And so Gus pretty loves, easy to lay down. <laughs> Gus just moves all in right away, takes all the play out of it, doesn't give Barry a chance to bluff at him. Barry's got jack high. I mean, I guess Gus figured Barry had an ace and would call him down. Or ace, ace two pair, or Yeah, set. ace ten, ace seven. He's going to call for a... Well, if he's got a set, out. you know he's going to call. <laughs> right. Uh, well, Barry, obviously, he's got nothing here. He's just trying to save face by not folding it really quick. Right. And uh, obviously Barry lays it down, and Gus takes it down there. Now, Gus can actually kind of be mad at Barry because you wonder if Gus doesn't, if Barry doesn't make that move, mm -hmm. the ace jack might be in there, ace five might be in there, and Gus might have won a bigger pot. Right. Getting a lot of emails referencing Morgan Keller. Yeah, he's a from quite his fraternity brothers. Boy. Everybody wants him to play a lot of hands. And his nickname is Mr. Peepers. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> we have no access to Morgan. Morgan, your name, my nickname is Mr. Peepers? 30. Yes, please say something to him, Donna.
Yeah, we're having a good time here at Live at the Bike, folks. Chris Kattan, right? Yeah, exactly. He, like, rips up an apple and stuff like that. Kind of looks a little bit like Chris Kattan, doesn't he? A little bit. He's much better looking than Chris Kattan, though. Chris Kattan, I would not call attractive. And you're, like, hot for this guy. No, I'm, but I'll tell you when someone's attractive. He's attractive. You're, you're right. I think you're pretty hot for him. I mean, uh, you said Chris Kattan, you're like, oh, no, but this guy's way better looking. Chris Kattan's not attractive on, at all. This guy's attractive. He is. Why don't you just come out and say it? Are you jealous, we'll David? Is that really the issue here? I'm jealous, yes, I'm <laughs> jealous. Yes, yes, yes. Truth be told, I'm completely and utterly jealous. Now that I know you like the smell of manure, I'm yes. very jealous. <laughs> and uh, looks like Morgan here raised it up. Mr. Peepers raised it up with Ace Jack off suit. <laughs> And David has re-raised him with ace-10 of clubs. Interesting. Now, this is an interesting case where, you know, obviously we know Morgan has got David dominated, but Morgan doesn't know that. And David has position on Morgan. And this is where the power of position and no limit hold him. It's huge. Ace-jack is a hard one to play. You got 20 left? And the flop is king 7-7, seven, seven, and this is exactly what happens. Morgan is out of position. He's missed the flop. And when he misses and he checks to David. And if David bets this, you know, Morgan's pretty much going to lay it down. Right. David took the betting lead by raising the flop, pre-flop. You know, and obviously I do not believe that Morgan can call us. No, East Jack is rough, which is, I mean, I like the raise pre-flop. To find out where you're at. But you get nowhere, you lay down. And he takes it down. I mean, I, I got to tell you, in position wise, when I'm playing poker, I look for any excuse not to play in the first couple of spots. You know, first early position. Yeah. Under the gun, second position, third position. I don't want to play a hand. I want to look for excuses not to play hands. Right. While I'm in, when I'm in the cutoff spot or on the button, I'm looking for excuses to play hands. And this is our last hand, folks. Here we go. It's been a real fun night at Live at the Bike. You can catch us tomorrow night for our big 2550 No Limit game starting at 7 o'clock Pacific time. Button is in seat two for our last hand. Bart. Is he going to play? Oh, he's got ace-queen suited under the gun, and he's going to raise it up. And is Bart going to win the last hand of the night? Let's see. <laughs> I think he's going to try. He's definitely going to try. Well, Joseph calls, and that's going to get seat two to call. That's going to get Kyle to call. And you wonder if Gus is going to be in there now with queen nine of hearts. He's going to call. Wow. And can Morgan go anywhere? No, I don't think Morgan can go anywhere either. Wow, the pot is quickly $125 to the flop, folks. And the flop is ace, eight, four. Okay. Nice flop for Bart. Looking good. Yeah, he's in good shape here. Joseph is the only player who has anything. He's got a pair of fours. Um, nobody's even got really diamonds. Kyle's got a backdoor diamond draw. And Bart is going to kind of a no-look bet. I think he was looking somewhere else while he was betting. He seems like seat one is the only one he's really yeah. worried about here. And he bet $75. And he's going to take it down. And take just down like the last pot no, of the day. And just like that, Bart wins the last hand of the night. He shows his ace queen. Take it down, Bart. What a night of live at the bike. And that's going to do it, folks. Catch us every Monday through Friday from 7 to 10 p.m. For David Tuckman and the lovely Nicole Pepe. Uh, and everybody here in the booth, thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow night. I'm coming back. I want to keep going. It's here. It's big. And it's closer than you think. It's not a tournament. It's what you don't see on TV. The cash is real. The stakes are high. They bet big. They win big. They lose big. High stakes live action poker. Live at the bike. Watch it live on the web or play it if you dare at the Bicycle Casino right here in Los Angeles.